I know Travis doesn't lock his doors when he's home. Was the door open when you got there? Or did you have to go to the garage? Or how did you get inside? Did you knock? Everybody says he just leaves his doors open when, he, when he's home. Trusts yes. everybody. Um, have you ever seen the movie The Secret? Welcome to part four of our Jodie Arias, The Wicked Witch of the Weird series. I'm looking forward to this one. Yeah, I am actually. This one is going to be, you know, have a lot of revelations. It is. Um, I th We think this is the one where she comes up with her second explanation yeah, as I'm to why. Yeah, I'm wondering what she's going to come up with this time. Well, first one was it wasn't me. Yeah. The second one is it was somebody else. In this case, it was two other people. Yeah. So Male um, and female. This is the uh, absolutely awful story that she gives to Detective Flores. Uh, thank you to um, all of our subscribers, all of our viewers that have watched our series so far. There's a link in the description uh, to the full playlist, parts one, two, and three. And we just want to address something uh, from part three. Basically, we asked where, where Jodie's lawyer was. Well, it would appear that she waived the right to a lawyer after she had her Miranda rights read to her. So that's something that we're happy to correct. We're not experts on American law. No, we um, don't. But, yeah, that we'll hold our hands up and say, you know, we should have thought before. We should have looked that. into yeah, it. we should have looked into that a bit more. So that's our mistake. Um, just a couple of disclaimers, our usual disclaimers. Um, we will be interrupting this and providing commentary on it so if you want to watch the full thing without hearing us yapping away uh we will provide the link to the unedited footage in the description for you and secondly we're not experts we don't pretend to be we're not professionals we're just two ordinary people who just call it as we see it yeah and ask whether um, what is happening makes sense or what is being described as common sense you know so without any further ado let's dive into uh jody Aris's second interview of july the 16th 2008 with detective flores last one was with detective blaney of the siskiyou police department this is with detective flores once again hang on tight it's going to be a hell of a ride Well, Rachel called me and told me that you wanted to talk to me. I was just on the phone with uh, Travis's sister, and I told her I just to get Smith. What'd she say? She has a million and one questions. More questions now than she had before. And I don't have anything to give her. Part of it because I can't give certain information yet, but the other bit is because I don't have a lot of information. I need more information. Are you doing okay? It doesn't matter how I'm doing. It does to me. <laughs> Thank you, but. Exactly. And I tell you something, I can't sleep at night worrying about how badly she's feeling, you know. Yeah. I've always been completely honest with you and I just, I wish that, that you could be honest with me. What matters is how his family is doing. Yeah. And of course I care about how my family is doing just because I'm the person here that that everyone thinks it's the bad guy it doesn't mean that my family have anything to do with anything and it doesn't mean that they were responsible for anything or that they should suffer at all and it's 
and of course I feel his family, you know, I don't know them as well, or I don't even know them at all, except for his grandmother. Yeah. You know, I've been, I told you yesterday, I've been doing this for a long time, and, and you're absolutely right. You know, the, the person's family who, who was hurt, they're obviously hurting, but there's a second family that hurts as well. And in this case, it's your family. Your brothers, your sister. Your mom and your dad. Yeah. Okay, so she's acting like basically Princess Pissy Nick is here, isn't she? Yeah, she's turning on the waterworks again. Yeah. Um playing the part of being highly emotional, but it does make me wonder whether she actually feels any empathy or any sympathy for what her family is going through. Probably her family, not Travis's. Not what she did. No, but I even wonder whether she feels anything for her own family. Because don't forget, we're dealing with someone who is completely stone cold here. Maybe her family's stone cold. Well, Maybe we don't he, know. Maybe he's using the family as like a way to um, get to her. Yeah, again, it could be psychological. I just wish they wouldn't hurt. Because it would be so much easier for me. Not that I deserve to have it easy, but... I don't think you're ever going to be able to take that away from them. I think they're always going to hurt. Now, the only thing that can solve that is time. Right about that. Rachel said something about uh, you wanting to see some photos, but I, I don't think I can show you any, any more photos. Why not? Not just. I don't like doing that. Now, we've talked about this off mic, haven't we? We have. And we've all, we wondered, without going ahead and looking at this footage, you know, before we record, we wondered whether he would actually give her any access to the photographs. And we're, we're so glad that he didn't. And we didn't think that he did, did we? No, but there's also a way that if he did, he could have checked for her reaction. reaction. Yeah, yeah. But I think even Flores knows that... But he already knew she was Gilla. He, yeah. But like I say, I think a part of him knows that she would probably be getting off on it and probably... Admiring some, her work. Yeah, taking some pride in her handiwork. Because something might happen to you. You, you might... First off, it, it's not something I do. The reason I asked was because of, I just feel like it might help me piece some things together. Um... And this is a more of a selfish reason. I think it might give me some sense of closure. I know it's kind of morbid. I don't even think I really deserve closure. His family does, but I wasn't able to attend his funeral. And it's just, I don't know, that's just why. Mostly. What is it you want to know about the photos? Do you want to see the room? Do you want to see the bathroom or do you want to see him or is it the photos before it happened that you want to see? I think the photos of after everything. I, I won't show you those. I won't, I'm not in good conscience. I, I, I can't do that. Are there, is there any that you can? No. I can't do that. Throughout this interrogation so far, and the interrogation previous one with Detective Blaney, 
uh, Jody looks has got a face like a fish after it's had a dry slap, right? You can imagine, I mean, you can't really see a good close-up of her face there, but you can imagine how crestfallen she feels well, after being told she can't see the photos. Yeah, because she probably feels like she can't admire what she did. Yeah. I wondered before, I mean, I've seen plenty of those kinds of photos. If you want, I can describe stuff for you. Okay. Because I was there. And those photos will never leave my head. I'm sure they'll never leave yours either. The one thing you gotta remember is that by the time he was found, the images that you saw were different than the ones that I saw. Things change over time. His body changes after time. We had a difficult time identifying who he was by the time we got there. He wasn't the same person. So that's why I don't want to show you photos. What about photos of just the room if you're not in it? I don't know. Anyone else does I don't have them with me here, but you know, as soon as I get a hold of them, another detective has them right now. What is it you can tell me about that? Was he expecting you to show up that day? He wanted me to come. But you didn't want to? No, I told him I was going to Utah. Why did you decide to go then? I didn't really. I was going to Utah. Actually, I talked to his brother Stephen first. And Samantha, I left her a message. She was off on vacation. And his other two brothers, one's at Gary, and I didn't talk to the other brother, Gary, I talked to him. Mike, that's his uncle. Yeah, he, he was going to call his other brother and his other sister. And I was planning on calling his aunt. She lives back in the Midwest today. Which aunt? said he was going to take care of that. And if she had any questions, that she could give me a call. And she's been so upset that she hasn't been able to call me yet. Is there something that you want me to tell them? The things that keep coming to my mind wouldn't help them at all. Wouldn't comfort them. It wouldn't just be cliched, meaningless words. Now, that's 
one thing we actually agree with her on, isn't it? Yeah. The, the thoughts going through her head at that time probably wouldn't bring the, the family any comfort or closure because the thoughts would be too horrific. Yeah, but, and no one wants to see that from no. the, the loved one. No. Their thoughts, you know, her thoughts, if she were to relay them to Travis's family, would be too horrific and they would never recover from hearing about what their loved one went through. Not from her, anyway. But it also amazes me that Jodie is not cold-hearted or sadistic enough to actually describe in minute detail right now what she did. Um, maybe a part of her is thinking, I'll save that for the trial. Or maybe for a book. Before, Yeah, maybe for a book if she thinks she's going to get free. Fat chance of that. Um, but, you know, maybe she... Um, because, you know, after this, she goes through the no jury will ever convict me. Yeah, bollocks, doesn't she? line, yeah. So she's changed her mind again. But, you know, maybe she doesn't want to put herself in deep doo-doo, but maybe a part of her is dying to really let out what she did. Yeah, probably also with a smirk as well. Yeah, and bask in her own um, homicidal genius. I'll let you decide what to say. And I'll relay it exactly how you want me to. Um, I have an unrelated question real quick. Sure. And if it's not, I mean, Detective Blaney said that, that she doesn't like me asking them because it makes me look like I'm concerned about trivial things, but I'm only asking because it concerns other people that I care about and... It's understandable. I just, if I could just know so I could tell them if I ever talk to them again or relay a message or call them. Um, on last Friday I had a wedding and... Just the camera? Yeah. And the only place that those photos are, are on my external drive and on the camera card. And It'll be a while before we get those back. Okay. But if they can just get to the right person, because that's the only thing they have for their wedding. I'll be absolutely positive to, to give those to the right people. I was going to edit them and make them look really nice, but he's... You know, can they, can, they can probably take them and edit the pictures, but who are those two people oh, those pictures belong to? Um, Brian Neiman okay. is his name. All right. Yeah, talking to your mom, uh, I, I think she mentioned something about that. And also on my external drive as well, maybe my computer and hard drive too, there were pictures of my little sister and I, and for whatever reason, she's in some kind of rehab program right now. New photos? Yeah. Well, pretty recent ones that she had of her prom night and, and of her and I that we were just goofing off. So they're her and I together and, and my mom was going to send those and also my little brother, she was going to send some of those and, and even if she doesn't send them, she wants them. So, I mean... They, I kind of took them for her, so they sort of I want understand. to understand. I mean, you're worried about other people right now. And, and but you mom, also need to understand that these people, right now, that stuff is not important to them. There you go. Once more, Jody wants to take him on a little magical mystery trip around her little fairy garden. Yeah, but the detective took the words right out of my mouth. It hit the nail on the head. This stuff isn't relevant. Nothing to do with anything. I... So, I mean, that's, that's well, good I, of you. I mean, I you're mean... thinking of them, but they're not thinking about pictures. They're not thinking about stuff like that. Well, I they're know, worried I about you. Eventually, they're going to want this. I know that they would want this. And did you also take my journals? Yes. All the three of them? All of them. Are you going to keep that forever? No. I'd like to return them to you someday. I just, um, well, I'm probably not going to get anything back ever, but I know that my mom made a mention of saying that she likes the way I write and she's always wanting to know my business. So, I mean, that That's something you want, to, want me to give to her? Um, I wouldn't mind if you did. I, it's something I wouldn't want her to read otherwise, but in this circumstance, I think she deserves to have every piece of me that she can because she's not getting any more. 
you're still here with us. Not going anywhere. Going somewhere. <laughs> still be able to talk to your family. They can talk to you and they'll be able to visit you. And Do you know what happened to my cash? I heard you can put cash on the books there so they, or on my book or whatever it's called so that I can get a few things that I might need in there. I don't know what it would be. But... I don't know. Once again, she's got a priority straight. I don't know about the situation here, but once everything gets transferred over to, to Phoenix, it's it's a different story. So I might not see that again? No, any cash that was there is yours. Like if you had cash in your purse, that's your money. I also had cash in my safe. I don't think they took any of that. I know there was mention that uh, there was uh, some cash that they saw and they just documented it and left it. Anyway, I don't, I mean, no, that's not important. No, it's important. It's important to you. And I understand that. I mean, there's things that, that I would think of if, if I was in your situation. I'd want to take care of the people who love me and that I love and want to make sure that everything was set. Because certain things you're not going to be able to do anymore. Like hug my family. No, you'll be able to. Well, they come visit, it's like behind the glass, you know? No, it's not. It isn't mm -hmm. here? No, in Arizona. And they're not going to come to Arizona? I guarantee you they'll come to Arizona and see you. When I moved away, they never came to see me. I was gone for 10 years. From my understanding, some of that was because, because of you. I had a house with a free bedroom and a bed and a pool and everything you could want and they never came to visit me once. It's my first home. I'm sorry, this is all stupid and it's irrelevant. I'm just saying they're not going to come to Arizona and they shouldn't have to come to Arizona. <laughs> and I don't think I want them to anyway. So yeah, when you say there are certain things that I won't do anymore, I know that it's really sinking in quite a bit. You don't think your sister and your brothers will come visit you? Yeah, I'm sure they will. Of course they will. You don't think your mom will come visit you? She will. Who do you think is worrying about you more right now? I think your mom and dad are worried more than anything. I know, dad went to the hospital yesterday because he was having a panic attack. He gets these things where they just can't get his heart rate down. And it's not, I mean, I haven't really been the cause of any of that prior. It's just happened. But... Somehow I have huge problems believing that. Yesterday I have everything to do with it. It doesn't even matter. Maybe he's had a long life. Everything, you, every breath he takes right now is because modern technology so it's a lot of a lot of time but I'm so sorry for Travis's family. What a bunch of bullshit Well they're asking for answers. What can you give me? What do you want me to tell them? tell them anything that you want me to. And it's not gonna solve anything for them. It's not gonna fill that void curiosity, but I think at least it'll be a start. What is it you want to say? I will call her as soon as I'm done talking to you. Um, one thing you could say, and this has nothing to do with his death, but it's something they may want to see. Um, two nights ago, 
It took me five and a half hours, but I posted a 45 minute video on YouTube of him doing a training in San Bernardino. Um, Where did you post that? On YouTube. YouTube. If you go to YouTube, it, it takes some time, a couple hours to actually get it up. And, you know, once it's pro they have to go through some processing thing. But if you type in Travis Alexander space dash space uh, systems training, it's a systems apostrophe S training. It should come up. What is it for? Travis Alexander. And then a dash. It's like a space and a dash. Space and just a dash? Yeah, and then a systems training. We've gone onto YouTube and we've had a look for this, haven't we? We have, yeah. And it, it takes some searching for, but we've actually found Jody's original video. Now, this is of Travis's alter ego called um, Eddie Snell, who is selling a cream called Palstenbach, I think it's called. So uh, we've enclosed the video here. We're going to include it so you can watch it for yourselves, just for context. So um, we'll let you watch this video and then we'll have a talk about it afterwards. Okay. back with you again just another freaking year later and I am excited for uh, the, the content that I'm going to bring to you and I appreciate it was a good company but before we get started on all that I'd like to share with you an exciting new thigh cream <laughs> that I learned about just recently called Poston Bomb. My old lady lets me see the kids without paying child support. <laughs> I won the tractor pool in Duchesne. <laughs> Life's been good, so get yourself a bottle of Poston Bomb. <laughs> So, aside from the footage that we saw of Travis doing his lectures and his seminars, that's, um, you know, really the only other footage of Travis that we've seen. Yeah, that's kind of like fun. Yeah, he seems He's, very fun-loving, doesn't yeah, he? Yeah, fun-loving, energetic, gift of the gab. Charismatic. Definitely out there. And the women love him. Oh, yeah. You could tell. Oh, yeah. I mean, I'm not sure whether that was Jodie behind the camera. You guys out, out there watching will probably know whether it is or not. We're, I'm guessing it is Jodie behind the camera. But when she turned to the women there, I mean, they were all looking at him as if to say, oh, yeah. You know. So, yeah, it seems as though he's, you know, a very um, charismatic, fun-loving guy, as we say. Um, Why would anyone want to hurt him? I know. I know. It's such a tragedy because, you know, he just seemed... He, he may have, you know been into you know chastity and stuff like that even if he did, didn't practice it he may have been into mom and police but he just seemed like a normal guy yeah he um, seemed different and he definitely didn't deserve what happened to him either apostrophe on this i don't know if that makes a difference but that's exactly what i titled it and then his friend chris hughes gives about a six and a half minute introduction to him and then travis gets up there and does a 30 minute training and he talks a lot about what's in the introduction to his book um he talks about his grandfather vic and loves his grandparents yeah yeah he still loves his grandparents yeah. he loves his parents and his family and he and i have similar beliefs and yeah, we know he's okay now. I know, and I know that he's okay, and he's in a good place, and I know that that doesn't make it any better here for anybody. No. But there's always that but. I think he's waiting for you to give relief to other people who are still here with us. And you, you know you have to. You can't leave it unfinished. 
is the last piece of this puzzle. If there was a beating human heart in her body, she would have given up that information by now. She would have done it on the first interview. Yeah, they wouldn't even be here now. No, it would have been all, all solved and sorted. If she had a conscience, if she had empathy, if there was a beating heart in her body and in her soul, she would have spared Trav Travis's family what they were about to go through. Yeah, but narcissists don't have that. Oh, God, no. And it's completely up to you, Jody. Like I told you yesterday, I have details on how things happen. There's ways to figure out. But the biggest question that everybody always asks is why? It's the biggest question of our life. Yes. Why are we here? Why do we suffer? Why do we go through the things that we do? Why do we hurt each other? The biggest reason I've ever found is for us to have happiness. I think you're right. In whatever situation that we have, no matter where we're at, who we are, and what our situation is, we can at least try to be happy. Do you want to talk about what happened that day? I've got the images in my head and I can explain whatever it is you want about what I saw when I went there. What I can't do is I can't show you pictures. What time did you get there that day? The pictures that I have, the first ones, show you they're at about 1.45 or so. Was it soon before that or had you been there for a while already? I don't think this alibi she's going to come up with about the two intruders was premeditated. I think it was done on the fly. They've got so much evidence against, you know, against her and confirming that she was there at the time. So she's scrambling for an alibi to come up with a reason why she was there. But if the intruder story was true, then why didn't she mention it before? Because it ain't true. Of course it's not true. But she's trying to make Flores believe her. So it doesn't make sense from the get-go, does it? It's well, just no, because completely stupid. And besides, wouldn't she be really traumatised by yes. the experience? Yes. She would be so traumatised by the experience, she wouldn't even want to even consider that the pictures exist. Never exactly. mind, look at them. I know his roommates are off at work during that time and don't come home till about 6.30, 7 o'clock. They don't even talk to him, really. It just seems like they just kind of rent rooms and they don't really socialize. And they kind of stick to themselves, especially his new roommate. Who was that? Did you know his new roommate? I knew and Zach was there. Zach and uh, Enrique was the other one. I think I saw Enrique at his funeral services, yeah. or I mean his memorial services, but I didn't meet him, or yeah. I didn't know him. It's a Mexican guy, he's kind of short, quiet, kind of reserved. 
Um, these are the roommates I knew, Dustin, who was, I think, in the room that shared Travis's wall, yeah. and John Hepworth, so in another corner room. But there was only Zach and Enrique there. Yeah. And those guys, we, we have all of their things as well, so, I mean, they're asking too. They're, Zach is going through so much right now, he's like, how can we, how could we have not known that he was there for days? He's, he racks his brain, he calls me two, three times a week. We brought this point up in the Chris Watts videos, didn't we? Yeah. Um, and that is about, it's not just the families um, and the loved ones who are uh, affected when somebody dies in a violent fashion. It's the people who find him, like, in this case, Travis's friends, the first responders who have to go in and investigate. Yeah, and... because it traumatises their lives too. Yeah, exactly. But do you think Princess Pissy Nick is... Arizona's premier jailbird bloody narcissist gives a shit about that. No, she doesn't. No, she doesn't. You know, just... Just goes over and over in his mind. He has no idea. And he was the one who first went into the room and found him. He's the one? Mm -hmm. Heard so many rumors about how that happened. Other friends came over looking for him, and they went into the room. There's a few of them. They came out, and you know what? They'll never be the same. They, you know, when you see something like that, it's it's difficult, especially when it's somebody you know, some somebody you love. I deal with it all the time, so it doesn't bother me as much. You must have to remain detached quite a bit. Mm -hmm. You know who, the, who I usually get attached to? Is okay. the people I'm talking to. To you. You're, you're the one that I'm going to remember. I remember him, but I didn't know him. I will remember you. I mean, we've talked so much since that day. Over the phone and here, and I'll probably talk to you some more later when we get back to Arizona. Whenever you go, I don't know. Everybody's hurting already. There's nothing else you can say or do that could help that except for maybe an explanation of why it happened and how it happened. And, uh, it's not my job to have an opinion of you and your personality and your character. It's, it's my job to sit here and talk to you and get the facts of the of the incident and and present those to to the court and whoever else needs to know. You wanna to try to open up and, and talk about what happened that day? Because I'm ready. I do, but I don't think I'm ready. I mean, there's not much to say. I just don't. You want to start and we can stop at any time you want? Fill in some details. This is what I do to assure that you're not just saying you did something just to cop out. Because there are certain details that only I know and the person who did this knows. Nobody else does. And I use this information to confirm what I suspected. 
So if you can just start and give me some details as confirmation, then that'll be fine. And if you want, we can continue at another time. Well, then let's start. Because I know that part that really wants to is that part inside of you that is telling you to do what's right. We don't have to go over details, all the details. Why did you go there that day, Jody? Why did you show up that morning? I have questions too. Were you going to try to convince them not to go to Mexico? Were you going to oh, no. try to convince them to go on a trip with you? Or No, he would never not go to Mexico. I would never want him to not go. He was um, going to see Chichen Itza, and it's on the list of a thousand places. That's one of the things I want to do in my lifetime. Yeah, it's an important part of our mm -hmm. history, both in the church and against our heritage, too. Once again, we have been educated by the people in the comments, and they have said, and we agree, don't we, that um, Jody had access to his Facebook, to his MySpace, and to his Gmail account. Yeah. There is no way that she did not know that Mimi was going to Cancun with him. There is no way that she did not know that the story he gave her about the babysitter was complete crap. Right, she knew. That's why she premeditated this murder. She knew all along who he was taking. Yeah. Because uh, she would have seen it. And the, the the wheel started to turn with the faked burglary a week before she murdered him. Yeah. That's where my people come from. Yeah. So why were you there that day? Please tell me. Did you just miss him? Did he call you? Did he miss you? When, what was it? The only other explanation I can think of is that you went there for one purpose. And that's to hurt him. And if that's the case, if that's the truth, then that's what you need to say. If you want me to call and tell his family that you, you're sorry and that you apologize for what happened, I can do that. Whatever you want. This is your time right now. I flew up here for a lot of different reasons, and one of them, the main reason, was to sit down with you here and talk to you about what happened. I did it yesterday, and now I'm here today, but the time is limited. There's so many things that I want to say. Start with one. Start with the beginning. Was it a last minute change from your trip to come down, go to, down to Arizona? I bet you were going through your head. Should I just go or should I just keep going to Utah? It's only an additional 300 miles from where you were or so.
Jonah, your time's running out. I'm not going to be able to talk to you anymore. And I want to. Once you get into the system, I'm not going to be able to talk to you anymore. You leave so many questions unanswered for me, and for his family, and for your family. You were there that day, weren't you? Were you guys alone? Can you answer that for me? Were you guys alone? Be looking for somebody else. Is there anybody else with you besides you and Travis? This here is Flores purely indulging himself. He knows that nobody else committed the crime. He knows it was Jody. He's just throwing that in there to get her to talk and to open her mouth and at least admit she was there. Yeah, but she's not even doing that at the moment. No, she isn't. But um, it is very clever questioning. The way he's putting it, yeah. Absolutely. And once again, I think this is going to be common for most of the cases that we're going to cover. If she didn't do this, right, which he knows that she did, but if she yeah. didn't do this, where's the anger? Why aren't you out looking for the people who actually did this or the person who actually did this? Why am I in custody? Well... None of that. Not only that, in the first interview, she'd be saying, well, why are you asking me? Yeah. Why aren't you out there looking for the person who actually did this? Yeah, yeah. So, from the first interview all the way through to this, actually, you know, she wasn't even in, under arrest in the phone calls we listened to. No, she wasn't. But certainly from the first police interrogation with Flores through Blaney's down to this one she hasn't displayed any anger any frustration about being in custody right now you think that that is what someone who is trying to maintain their innocence would do we've been through this with chris watts yeah we did yeah and she's displaying the exact same lack of interest as he was as he was so he is just entertaining himself now he knows that nobody else was involved he knows it was her he just wants us to get to to admit yeah. it yeah to open up Are you protecting somebody else? Jody. I'm sorry, I'm just... I just don't know what to do. I'm trying to just figure it out. I'm right here. I'm right in front of you. This is what you need to focus on right now. You had Rachel call me for a reason. And that's why I came back here. Clay put those photos up. But I also thought that because you communicate with his family more regularly, I don't think she's talked to me. I just don't know what to say. He deserved to have some kind of peace. Well, 
you want me to ask you a question that they've been asking me? Maybe you can answer it. Same question I've been asking you. Was there somebody else with you? That's the number one question that his whole family has been asking. What do I tell them? You can almost hear the cogs in her mind turning trying to fit what he is saying into a narrative trying to um construct a story that he would believe that he might believe that sounds halfway plausible you can almost hear the machinations in her head can't you you can what do you want me to say to them Because the only answer I can give them is I don't have any evidence to show there was anybody else there. Well, that's another way of saying I don't know for sure. And that's absolutely true. I don't know if somebody else was there with you. Please give me that at least. You know, if there was, you don't have to say a name. It's a simple yes or no. Yes or no, Jody? Have you noticed how the main question has switched? It's no longer, were you there? It's no longer, what time did you get there? It is now, was there anybody there with you? Yeah, it's like he knows she was there. Yeah. But it's like uh, just saying, was anyone else there with you? Yeah. And that admits that she was there. Yeah, it's kind of a variation of a sales close. Yeah. Um. You know, he's basically get trying to get a yes or a no to it. He knows for a fact, as we said before, that there was no one there with her. He knows that she did this alone. Of course right? he does. He's just trying to get her to open her mouth. You keep fighting it. What will happen to me today and from here on out? Mm -hmm. If I just told you every single detail that I know? And I gave you a confession. He's gutter. Yeah, from here on in, she's a cottage cheese bap. Nothing else changes. It just speeds up the process. In what way? Do I go to Arizona faster? Yeah. The process in Arizona speeds up. So if I maintain my innocence, then I stay here longer, just in the system. No, no, you don't really anything. stay here longer. That speeds up the process in Arizona. Like the trial and all that jazz? Yeah. Do you want to put your family through a trial? That's another question you have to ask yourself. No. Can I do it all without a trial, or does there have to be a trial? It's something that you can discuss with the prosecutor oh. and I'm on the phone with him pretty much every day giving him updates what's his name his name is Juan Martinez your reputation precedes you and he's the number one prosecutor in Phoenix well 
at least in my book he is. It's actually amazing listening to this and watching this because this is kind of the first time that she learns who the prosecutor is and he goes on to become her nemesis. Yeah, he does. It's kind of like, you know, in a weird way, in a flipped way, kind of like watching Batman learn about the Joker for the first time or Superman learn about Lex Luthor or Brainiac for yeah. the first time. I mean, I know I'm using superheroes as an analogy and she's far from a bloody superhero, but that whole concept of having a nemesis... Martinez, by all accounts, goes on to become her arch nemesis. And it's kind of fascinating to watch the genesis of this occur, you know what I mean? Is Phoenix part of Marco? Yes. I wonder if I should just get a lawyer first. That's completely up to you. I know that you can't stay here forever and you need to go back. Mm -hmm. If I get one, will you be able to still talk to me afterward or does it, everything stop or what? I'll tell you exactly what the lawyer's going to tell you to do. He's going to say, nope. No on what? No more contact. She had her chance. You had your chance to talk to her. It's over. Well, I mean, I just would want his advice and it doesn't necessarily mean that he, um, that I'm going to take his advice, nor does it mean that, you know, That's completely up to you, sitting in a cell somewhere not I saying anything is going to help. I can't advise you either way. Right, so I've got a question that I'm going to throw out to our subscribers, to our viewers, basically those who know quite a lot about this case. When she did the press interviews, um, between the trial so sorry between um, these interrogations and the trial she did three press interviews in 2008 was she being represented then by legal counsel or was she still doing that off her own back because we've been trying to find that out and unfortunately none of the kind of accounts that we read we we, we can't find that out we can't seem to find that fact out so if you know that, please let us know in the comments. It would just be interesting to know, wouldn't it? Yeah, it would. Whether she sought advice from legal counsel before she gave those interviews. Yeah. But what I can advise you on is... the truth. The details of the case that you have in your head that you can give me will allow me to verify the information that I have to make sure that I'm looking at the right person and to verify my theory that nobody else was there with you. It's like I said yesterday, there is no doubt in my mind what happened there that day couple of details that I don't have. How it started and why it started. And like I said before, if you can provide me just a few, that I can at least relate to the family. That would be fine with me. If you don't want to give all the details, we don't have to go through all the details. But let's, let's at least start. Let's start right here, right now. there's a question that I ask you that you feel like you don't want to answer, you can say, no, I don't want to answer that right now. Okay, just hold on.
Do you want to move forward or no? Yes, I do. I just... You do? I do, I do, but... Well, let's do it. I just... I'm here. I know. I'm not trying to stall. I'm not trying to waste your time. I know I'm you're trying not trying to, to stall. It's... I know it's difficult for you. It's difficult for anybody sitting in your shoes right now. We disagree with Detective Flores when he says that, she, you know, she's not stalling for time because she is. Yeah, definitely. But he is on the cusp of getting something out of her. I think really he will say anything within the boundaries of the law uh, to get her to say something to him. So, you know, he's tra he'll butter her up, he'll say anything in order for her to proceed. So That's a possibility. Yeah, yeah. So, the, you know... Both ways of looking at it. It's kind of, it's all really blurry. It really is blurry. My ass. What went through your mind after it happened? fear? What did you think when you were driving away? I was scared. I can't imagine what you were going through waiting for it to finally come out. Waiting for what to come out? The news that he, he was no longer with us. He must have been going through hell. Every day that went by, what were you thinking? What was that? I was scared. I'm sorry. And you just went on with your day like nothing had happened. I had to. You had to. Did you tell anybody what had happened? It must have been hard. It's all a blur. Can I please see those photos? Okay. So now she really wants to admire her handiwork. 
would appear so. Asking for those photos again. Yeah. After being told no. She's pretty relentless on seeing them, isn't she? I think she just wants to get off on what she's done. She is probably, I mean, she, she might not. We haven't seen this footage, but I'm guessing that she wants to see the the photos or she tells Flora she wants to see the photos to help jog her memory or something. And also yeah. to see if there's anything there that might incriminate her. Absolutely. Yeah. As soon as I get back, the detectives went to Reading to go pick up the rental car that you had that day. And they took the photos. Well, there's probably something in the rental car. Maybe blood. In the trunk. In the back seat. That's what we're going to look for, so. I was just thinking maybe the handles, lock, steering wheel, something like that. Things that get touched. Is that what was going through your head when you left? What did I leave behind? What did I touch? No. What was going through your head? You liked his neighborhood there. Just say I didn't run. Um, a little bit of a survival instinct, but it was mostly just just run. Fear. His roommates were gonna get home soon. I was home. Did you even think about that? That's the first thing that I was thinking about. It's when she left here. She barely missed his roommates. Or maybe his roommates had gotten home and just didn't hear her. Did they hear anybody at all in the house? No. They saw things which were unusual. Like what? They saw his CTR ring and his watch on the kitchen counter and they thought that was odd. He never leaves town without those. No. He always leaves us there, but unless he's leaving, then he takes those things and puts them on. There were clues here and there, but they just went on with their day like nothing had happened, without even asking questions. They knew that he was going on a trip, but they didn't know what day. That's he was supposed them. to leave on Tuesday. On Tuesday. And I think she factored that into her plan. I think she'd actually thought of that, that um, his roommates weren't exactly sure what day he was going to Cancun so they wouldn't really have, have noticed that he wasn't around because they'd have thought he was in Mexico true Very so true. yeah so I think that she factored that into a plan she was smart enough to do that she just wasn't very good on the aftercare was she no the following week that's right I don't think that was But all those little things that they talked about now, they, Zach is killing himself. He's like, I, I don't know how I did not see this. Why didn't I just go check on him? Why didn't I just follow my instinct and go look? I'm Travis didn't always bond with his roommates. He did yeah. with some, he bonded with Aaron. Even though he had an intolerance for Aaron's lifestyle, he bonded pretty well with his friend Josh Ward, who lives back in Southern California now. He wasn't too close with Zach or Enrique. No, or his previous roommates. They, they, they seem to. They seem to have been just people who rent rooms out from them. They don't become friends. They, yeah, they were just. They have their own lifestyles and and they go on. Yeah, he, his rules were you know LDS standards and pay your rent on time be clean. What time did you leave there that day?
can't remember. Just trying to drive and get as much distance as you could. Um. How long were you in the house after it happened? I know you tried to clean yourself up and clean up what you could. Mm -mm. It wasn't. It didn't take too long, but you, you did. Why did you throw the camera in the washing machine? We found blood in the downstairs bathroom where somebody had tried to wash their hands. There's blood on the outside of the washing machine. There's there's little things that give us clues to what you were doing afterwards. Do you remember those things? Mm -hmm. no. Now that was a clever answer she just gave. Definitely. When he said, um, do you remember doing any of those things? And she said, no, that's not an admission of guilt. It's simply an admission that she didn't remember doing any of those things, which, you know. Yeah. Do you remember something? What was your intention of going there that day? What was the purpose of the visit? The same as before? Did you have plans on going down there? Or, I know you said he had called and wanted you to come down. At what point did you decide, okay, I'm going? He always was like, not, I want to say meddling, but he was always like more concerned than I felt he needed to be about my finances. And he's like, well, how can you make a road trip when you're this, that, and that, and, you know? Well, he expected everyone to be like he is. <laughs> he did. He really did. He expected that, hey, if you go on a road trip, you better be thinking about this and that. And there were so many times where I just threw my responsibilities to the wind and went on road trips with him because I am a little irresponsible when it comes to that. It's not just because it was with him. It's because it was the traveling. Yeah. And, um, you know. When he leaves, he, he usually makes sure everything is planned out. And and that he has enough money for it. Yeah. And you just kind of take off sometimes. Yeah, I guess. You're a very, very free spirit. And it's I've known that from the beginning. Sometimes it's good, sometimes it's not so good. What gives you the indication, like, when you say you know that from the beginning? I'm talking to you. I'm talking to people who know you. Right, have you noticed the complete contrast? A couple of minutes ago, he was, at, he was being direct with her. He was asking her direct questions. She was totally clammed up. She wasn't saying a word. Yeah. Okay. Now, he's allowing her to waffle on, and he's actually indulging her as well. So, the direct approach isn't working. Maybe he's letting her waffle on and indulging her so that she will open up a bit more again. She will drop her guard again. Yeah. I think that might be one of the tactics he's using. Possibly, yeah. Because the direct approach is... And he's, neither of them have been overly aggressive with her. Either Neither him nor Blaney. Have you noticed that? Yeah, I think they're trying to treat her with their respect to show her that they're... That, or to make her believe that they're her friends and but they're not going to get aggressive with her. That approach isn't working either. I mean, they treated... Chris Watts with kid gloves. They're treating Jody Arias with kid gloves at the moment, right? Maybe that will change as this video goes on. Flores will become more um, assertive and maybe combative with her. We do know that Juan Martinez goes after her pretty hard, so hopefully, we'll get some. You know, we'll, we will get to that. But 
Um, yeah, it's just very interesting watching the complete contrast in her behaviour between now and a couple of minutes ago. It's like, oh, that's just Joey, you know. I am real she just, you know. just... <laughs> um, You want to go do something, you just go do it and you'll deal with the consequences later. Yeah. <laughs> when did you decide to go visit him? At what point? Were you already on the road or was it from here? Did you already know you were going to go visit him when you left here? Um... And we're back to the possibly incriminating questioning. Yeah. Very, very quickly. And once again, she's she's gone silent. She's clammed up again. Yeah, she only seems to really talk when she's gone off on one. Yeah, yeah. But any direct questions, she won't answer. Anything related to that day, she clams up. Anything related to before that day, or maybe after that day, not in the immediate aftermath, but, you know, after that day, she clams up. Yeah, she won't talk. This is becoming very, very repetitive and extremely monotonous. Um, I've done that before. Sometimes I just leave and, oh, you know what? I'm going to go visit this person while I'm on the way. Did you see any of his, uh, his roommate's cars out in the driveway when you left? That part just bothers me because it was so close to the time when one of the roommates came home. And I just, I'm thinking maybe you were still in the house when he was there. No, um, no, I was in the driveway. You were in the driveway? They would have seen the car then, right? Yeah. Oh, my space was always right behind Travis's car, and he parked in the it's a three car garage, and he took the middle space. And one oh, was the Prius. Was kid, yeah, the Prius or his BMW before that, and then there was like a smaller little space, but it was enough for a car, but it was always jammed with junk. Oh, yeah, his roommates. He was very much that he didn't save stuff, you know. Yeah. He had so much storage space. He was so generous when I moved there. He let me store all my stuff there because I went from I went from a house to a room. And so I had artwork, some I paint. Mm -hmm. Art supplies, photos, books and books and books and books. So many books. Some weren't even mine, they belonged to my friend Matt. I was running that car yesterday mm -hmm. because I was taking a trip to Monterey. And oh, this um, is Matt? Yeah, I was gonna drop off some books to him that I'd had for years. We dated like eight years ago. We're still friends. So um, all of his books that somehow I ended up keeping, and some were mine, some more like esoteric and spiritual kind of books that I'm probably never going to read now because they're just so out there. I'm sure they'll get those back to him. And then some photos also to Daryl, who was another guy I dated after Matt that we bought the house together. And kitchen supplies. I Daryl paid for so much when he was there. He uh -huh. footed the bill of Costco, so I had um they said that they took knives out of my car. Um I don't even know who they are, you know. Oh, they're Daryl's. I mean okay. they've been in storage for years just collecting well, desks. Good to know that there is. And... Yeah, no. They were all just they one might have been mine, but like I just I think they were Daryl's. And so there's those and a bunch of kitchen supplies and pictures of him and his son mostly and we used to go to 49er games all the time just in camping trips so the car you had driven there was the rental car yeah the ford focus oh that's yeah, the car they're going to go pick up ford focus oh yeah i know they, they were going to rent you another car but then uh, something happened with that first car either you didn't like it or 
Oh, it was red, and I thought, because I always hear that you don't drive red car, because I would never buy a red car, and it was fine, it was a Ford Focus too. Um, and you got the other car instead. I was the like, white. do you have one with a more neutral color, because red is like, you always get pulled over and you get tickets. No, I don't know if that's true, that's just it's something I've been true. told since. Um, it's just there's a lot of people that have red cars who like to go fast. It's a personality um, thing. It's not because of the car color. I just for me it's a psychological thing because it's more noticeable and it's like you know, a red flag or a bowl kind of thing. Yeah. I know Travis doesn't lock his doors when he's home. Was the door open when you got there? Did you have to go to the garage or how did you get inside? Did you knock? Everybody says he just leaves his doors open when he when he's home. Trusts yes. everybody. Um, have you ever seen the movie The Secret? It's kind of, you're familiar with the whole law of attraction kind of thing. Like what you think you become or you bring yeah, into your life. That's true. He felt um, that if you lock your doors, then what are you telling the universe? What are you telling the, the ether out there? Is that I need to lock my door for a reason. Yeah, I, I want to be safe. Yeah, I want to be safe. <laughs> which also gives the impression that, well, there's somebody that could hurt me. So, and by trusting and opening them. To He's a safe. very, very trusting person. So we've just listened to Joe Diarius deliver a stream of sugar-coated bullshit, right? Yeah. And then Detective Flores asked her how she got in through the into the house, whether it was through the unlocked door or the garage. Tumbleweed. Again. Yeah. Every time and then, yeah. a direct question is asked. Tumbleweed. Crickets. Yeah. Silence. Okay. Then he asked... Um, because we, we understand that he didn't lock his doors. And then she went on another street. Have you seen a film called The Secret? What the effing Emma has that got to do with anything? That right? ain't got anything to do with... That's not even relevant. I mean, you know, if that had some personal significance for, for Travis, that's fine. But if she could be this verbose when answering his direct questions, I think it would certainly help Travis family, Travis's family along a lot more, wouldn't it? It would. And that's what made him who he is. Most of us come from a different kind of background and, and have a different type of philosophy. Doing, I do. doing what I do for a living, I lock my doors. I can imagine. Yeah, I guess me coming from Salinas, mm -hmm. I always lock my doors. I used to go to sleep at night and I would hear gunshots. Mm -hmm. We weren't in a bad neighborhood, but our neighborhood, neighbor in another neighborhood, it wasn't that great, and gunshots carried. And there, because Salinas is agricultural, and there were a lot of fields, and I used to think that there were hunters in the fields, <laughs> their dogs catching animals or something. Yeah, yeah. They were all just gangs. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm not trying to... That's okay. okay. I've noticed that when I've talked to you, you kind of go off sometimes. Travis used to be like, get to the point. Ha ha! You think? Get to the point. And he, and that made me kind of mad. He had a little bit of a double standard with that because if you've ever, if you ever see him train or talk, he ask any of the leaders in prepaid legal. He is notorious for going too long. Mm -hmm. um, his friend Dave Hall in Utah cuts him off, and he get he got mad at him once because he went five minutes over, and he was he just talks and talks and talks. And I yeah. said, you know, you're kind of long winded yourself. Well, he had a he had a future. You know, that's what, yeah. that's what he wanted to do, yeah, and he was good true. at it. He, he was, was so really good. good at it. He talks about things of more substance, though, and I just ramble. Listen. You simple-minded, raisin-eyed, badger turd. That was not the question. The question was, how did you get into the house? None of this bollocks, none of this bullshit. We just want to know. So was the door unlocked when you got there? Or did you go and you went through the door of the garage? I know a lot of his friends have the key code for the garage too. He doesn't keep that a secret either. Um. I got that from several different friends. Yeah, 0817. Was he expecting you?
Yes. Did you surprise him? I know he was always happy to see you. What you guys had was not wrong, Jody. Going over all his stuff, he was always happy to see you. this time when, because I was in his ward boundaries, so uh, one of my roommates went to his church and they were doing some church activity and Travis was getting a ride um, when he said his friend Katie Barnes was in the back seat, he was in the other seat. <sighs> God, I tell you something, this is like stodging through treacle, isn't it? I, she's she's got she should have a PhD in talking bullshit. This well, woman. she should, but I think she's trying to lead the detective to a bleeding Mad Hatter's tea party at the Marshmallow Garden. Yeah, probably. Yeah, it wouldn't surprise me. But I have just never in my life met anybody so annoyingly stubborn. She is. She hasn't mentioned anything that's relevant, relevant that would help the case or would help Travis's family. The family, yeah. And that's. All they've been all they've been asking of it is to give them some closure and help them with the case because they know she did it. But she keeps going off on one about films that he likes and, and call oh for Christ's sake, just get to the point. But she won't. She's wasting time. I know exactly what JCS meant now when he said how annoying she is. She is uber annoying. Mm -hmm. Another two people in the front, I guess they were all gonna squeeze in and go to this church activity and they were swinging by to pick up Amy, <laughs> my roommate. And I wasn't there, I don't think. I was at work or something. But he said he wasn't doing much. He must have been on his phone or something texting. But he said he, they parked and he looked up. And it was my house. He's like, what are we doing here? <laughs> and he freaked out. I started laughing so hard when he told me that story. And they're like, we're getting Amy. She's going with us. Oh, OK. And he just kind of sat there twiddled his thumbs and then got Amy and she left. This is after you guys broke up? Well, yeah, because yeah. by the time I lived in yeah, that house, we right. were together. It was just, I think it just weirded him out. Yeah. I don't know what reminded me of that just now. You said something. He was happy to see you. Yeah. I don't think he would have, he would have probably been, it would have been awkward, I think, then. Because we kept... We you guys had a different kind of relationship. You guys were happy to see each other, but for some reason he couldn't outwardly show it in public. He, um... He was, he was afraid of his image, and to him his image was everything. And he it, told me on several occasions it, it saddened him and it bothered him. He had two friends in particular that gave him a very hard time about our friendship, and that was Chris and Skye. Um, but I think they did it out of concern for his, his future, um, his, like his marital status. Um, you know, by him and I continuing that, he, we were both just postponing what we should be focusing on instead. Well, you're living life. Life is what you make of it. It's it's not set in stone. Yeah, I don't think it's you always have our priorities in the right I know place. the church has a general plan. You you go if you're a guy, you go and go on a mission, you come back, you find a girl, and you get married, and you start having kids. And you start contributing to society and to your church. Yeah, that's really not a bad look. You, you came into something. I don't know whether you, you came in with both feet or you still had one foot out, but it's a whole different society in that church. I, it's an all it or is. nothing. It is. And I think that's just because the church actually And that's what people lives struggle their standards. with. It's, they have the utmost standards, and you look around. And there's not one person in that church, in those pews, who doesn't need to be there. By my calculations, they've been questioning her now for about seven hours. He questioned her for three hours initially. She questioned, uh, Blaney questioned her uh, for about two and a half, three yeah, hours. And that. now he's been back in with her for about an hour. So that's about seven hours, right? In total, yeah. When... I mean, they are detectives, they're professionally trained, they know what they're doing, but they keep indulging her. And they keep, you know, wanting to make her talk and, and, and keeping her digressing 
from the main point. And I really, really wish that Flores would get a bit more aggressive and a bit more assertive. And just say, that. can you just get to the point? Can we just get to the point? Can you just stop leading us on this merry, merry um, trail that you're leading us on and just tell us what happened? You just know, tell us what happened on that night. Yeah, start to frighten her instead of coddling her. You know, that would be nice to see. Obviously, they're professionally trained. We're not. They know what they're doing. But it would be nice to see her come up against some real hard, tough questioning, you know, before she gets to face Martinez. It would. If they were perfect, they wouldn't have to go. And sometimes I think it's a facade. I know. But Travis kept trying to live up to those standards, but he's a human being and he's both of you are mortal and you have free will and that's that. Sometimes I think maybe he put too much pressure on himself to be perfect or to at least portray himself to be perfect. That's maybe why something like this happens. Things get way out of hand. I just, I, you know, I'm not an evil person. I um, know you're not. But I've always had, and I'm not a promiscuous person. Um, something attracted you guys to each other. Yeah, and I think there was also, I already, I knew him well. I knew him through and through. I loved him and I cared about him. Um, and I, I knew we weren't going to get married, so I just... But How did you know you weren't going to get married? Um, a couple like, of reasons. It's like oil and water? You guys just don't mix? Uh, we mixed really well for a time. Mm -hmm. But I think when I discovered his ways last year, it, it was so hard, but... Um, what ways are those? Um, I just, he didn't seem like husband material, but I, it didn't mean that he wouldn't be in the future. It just meant that, um, something that Chris and Sky said to me back in January of 2007 really stuck. And they said, do you want to be like Deanna and wait six years? Yeah. Christ on a fucking Suzuki. Here we go again. No, do you know what? I'm going to fast forward this because it's 12 minutes of just a monologue of her talking absolute nonsensical bollocks about irrelevant shit things and i'm not that, having it things that don't even matter yeah i mean we've sat through that 12 minutes and you know we were falling asleep weren't we, we were there was nothing of any relevance addressed asked or answered she's leading him down this merry little dance and he is willingly going with her and it's starting to kind of irritate me i don't know about you oh absolutely it is me needs to get a bit more aggressive i yeah. think and get to get to the point if this is strategy then it's not working at the moment because he's giving her too much of a free reign. Yeah, every time he asks a question that's re that's relevant, she clams up. Yeah. And but then she goes off on one. He doesn't ask. In, in this 12 minutes that we're fast-forwarding here, he doesn't ask anything relevant. He just indulges her. She takes him all over the place from, from trips that they were planning, from... Um, you know, uh, when she... Arguments the had. Yeah, uh, uh, stuff like that. Nothing at all to do with what Flores is trying to ask her about, which is the day in question. Exactly. June the 4th. That's that's the only thing that is relevant. Yeah, but she's just leading him around the houses once again. And we've sat through... We don't want to subject you to it because you will be bored. You will be absolutely bored shitless if you listen to it. Those of you that have listened to it will probably know what we mean. But we're going to stop it um, at a point where she starts talking about Ryan. Yeah. And going to see Ryan, because that seems to be a little closer to it. Any more irrelevant stuff, we'll skip through. We'll put a fast forward through. But we just want you to get to the, the nitty gritty. You know what I mean? Yeah. I wasn't even... Like, I had been talking with Ryan at this point, And... Obviously, there's a distance there, and that was difficult, and he really wanted to spend time with me, and I really wanted to spend time with him, and it just seemed like he had made a few comments, I should, when am I going to come out there? And, you know, I was like, as, as soon as you want, you know, but I didn't think he was serious. 
And uh, what's this Ryan you're talking about? Ryan Burns. Yeah. Um, so finally, um, things began to work out at Casa Ramos with my schedule, which is the Mexican restaurant, and they have, I have a three-day weekend there. So I thought I'll make this, take this opportunity and go see Ryan, and that was my intention. I. What happened when you left? Why did you go the other way? That's my question is you know, why why go to see Travis if you're going to see Ryan as well? And did did Travis know you were coming? He knew? I saw you kinda of shake your head a little bit, I don't know. This is hard. It's okay. Did he know you were coming? Did you guys talk on the phone? What was the discussion about? Gordon Hinckley, mostly. The last conversation you had? The last long one. We talked a little bit prior to. Did you guys talk when you were when you were en route to to Phoenix? Yeah. Just briefly. Told him my phone was dying, which was true. Um, I thought I left my charger in Monterey with Matt. Um, I really honestly thought that I left my charger there, and I had been talking all day between, uh, just on the phone. Um. So he knew you were coming? He was expecting you. Now obviously you guys had, you know, a little encounter and is that when those pictures were taken? Did he even show you those pictures? That'd be hard, Joni. I feel really powerless in here. I know. Do you know what my family is doing today? No. Do you know if they're good or I haven't talked to them today. I know they're worried. Everybody's just kind of in limbo right now. Is there any? So obviously there was nobody else at the house when you got there. His roommates were gone. Well, there was Napoleon, but he's a person too. <laughs> I got to meet Napoleon. Oh, he's so awesome. But nobody else was there? I think his roommates were there. You think his roommates were there? Were there cars there? You would have had to have seen their cars. You parked in the driveway, right? Yeah. Now that's a hard one to decipher. Because he just asked her... Or, or rather, she said to him, I think the roommates were there. And then he said, you parked in the driveway. And she said, yeah. Now, whether she was saying yeah to she parked in the driveway that particular day, or whether she usually parked in the driveway, I don't know. But I just found that particularly interesting. Could that be her first admission of actually being in the house at the time? Well, maybe this tactic is working, wearing her down. So she's giving a little bit hints away of, what's of what's happened but yeah she's not fully there yet probably not fully there yet i mean she's probably as you say being calculated being measured but after seven hours of questioning over two days that's probably going to be very hard for her to do yeah
One roommate parks it in the garage and the other one parks outside. Well, I know Zach would park on the street a lot when I lived there before. And he pulled his car into the garage whenever he would work on it. What makes you think his roommates were there? I asked him. What did he say? Who was home? He said they were there. But I don't know who. Um, the reason I asked, because it's kind of an indication of how quiet we have to be. What time was that? Do you remember what time you rolled in? Same way? I think. Yeah, that makes sense. You're pretty sneaky. You go up there and your roommates doesn't even know that you're there. <laughs> I do that many, many, many nights. How did they not see your car? Um. I don't know. I was parking. Oh, you know what? Zach was house sitting for his girlfriend. His girlfriend was on a trip with, uh, was on a cruise with her parents, and he was staying the night at, I think he stayed the night at. Uh, that makes sense because I want to say that his roommate, he said his roommate was home, but I don't remember, but I think he said one roommate. One was home. roommate. Yes, and Enrique, he gets up about 5 30, and if 6 I'm o'clock. And Enrique is, has the room that shares the wall with Travis's room. Which is like yes, and you know it's a KB home. Travis always says so the walls are really, really thin. Yes, they skimp on that part. Yeah, so Enrique was home too, so and about two or three in the morning. But he gets up about six, and no, he leaves the house about six in the morning. And he didn't notice anything different. So a breakthrough. She admitted she got to his house at like three o'clock in the morning. Yeah. But um, Enrique, the housemate, the roommate, didn't see her car, neither did Zach. Yeah. Which is strange. So this leads me, I mean, once again, we're speculating because we haven't seen the trial yet. But this leads kind of me to speculate where she parked her car. I mean, if this was premeditated, she's not going to want anybody to know she was there. So I'm guessing she parked the car a, a, a distance away and maybe walked there. She probably parked it a few blocks away and then walked on foot. Yeah, as I say, we're speculating. Let us know in the comments. Um, but I'm sure we will discover this during the trial, won't we? We will. Do you guys spend the whole day together then? That following day? Did you guys go anywhere? Just stayed in the house? Slept. Well, after a long trip, I'd sleep too. I'm trying to stay up all night waiting. He was watching something on YouTube. Some stupid video. He's like, you gotta see this. And I'm watching it, and I'm like, this is so boring. I'm like, what? I was like, what's the point of that? And he's like, just stupid, pointless stuff. I'm like, okay. I, mean, you know, I guess everyone's gotta have their time to binge out. Being so driven and deep as he is portrays himself to be it's just funny that he watches stuff like that it wasn't anything profane or bad or vulgar it's just like people <laughs> like dancing but they had like boxes of foil on their head and it was just like weird like robotic kind of music the pictures that i showed you of you laying on a bed and stuff is that when those were taken that day We also made a video, we deleted it. Video on the, uh, on his camera. On that camera. Yeah. You get videos are, that? videos are hard to get once they're erased. They take up so much room. Yeah. And, uh, whereas pictures are a little different. Yeah. Um. What happened after that? What, what went wrong? I know that the last photos of him were taken about 5:20, 5:30, and you said he doesn't like uh, he doesn't like you to take pictures of him and stuff. He was very private about the shower. Like we, 
Is that why you were taking pictures of him in the shower? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Trying to get back at him. No. Um. I'm, really surprised he, I'm surprised he allowed you to take pictures of him in the shower. The first few looked like he wasn't too comfortable, but obviously whatever you were saying to him made him a little more comfortable. I You remember that? What went wrong? Did he say something to you? Were you angry about something? Were you frustrated? What was it? Something happened at that point, and I don't know what it was. What are they going to do with the rental car? Are they going to bring it here? Mm -hmm. um, there I'm were several photos of him, and the last one that we have is him sitting in the shower. And that's when I think it happened. He was sitting down, looking up at you. What did you do? What happened, Joey? You've gone this far. Did you plan on doing that the whole time? Okay, so slowly but surely she is revealing more. She's revealed that she was there. She revealed that she slept. She revealed that she got up and started fooling around with him. And she revealed that she was taking pictures of him. Um, he is getting somewhere with her. Yeah, but the question is, will he get out of her here and now about what she did? No. You know when we said earlier on that a mind, we could hear the cogs working in a mind? They're going into overdrive now. I think this is probably when she's starting to properly construct the narrative of the intruders. Um, this is going to be interesting if slightly frustrating to watch, I think. Then I don't understand why. Why you, why you took a gun with you? Oh, I didn't. Where does that gun from then? Where did you get it? Everybody says he didn't have one. Where did you get it? If you didn't take it. Did he have one in the house? Not to my knowledge. Then where did you get it? Did you bring it with you? Did you get it there in Arizona? I didn't ever have it, actually. I didn't like, have it in my possession. Then who had it? If you had it and Travis didn't have it, then who had it?
Jody. Please. I can't. Why not? Are you protecting somebody else? Why would somebody else do this? So as we've said before, we know that he knows that no one else was involved. She said she can. She can, but she won't. Because she still thinks that she's got a hope of beating this and going free. <laughs> she's got a hope in hell. Yeah. I mean, she doesn't realise that she's going to wait four years for a trial right now. She doesn't realise that, right? So she's going to be incarcerated for four years. And that's before the even trial begins. Yeah. So, she can, but she won't because she's not interested in helping Detective Flores with the case, coming clean. She's not interested in that. She's certainly not interested in coming clean for the sake of Travis's family or even her own family. She doesn't want to come clean because she thinks she's going to beat this. And I tell you something, you got more chance of bloody platting sawdust. I don't know. Did someone catch you there? Someone not expecting you to be there? They wouldn't see my car. Then who was it? taking the pictures to the time you left. What happened? What happened after that last picture was taken? If you want me to believe that somebody else was there, you have to show me. You have to explain to me what happened. Otherwise, it was just you. And if that's the case, that's okay. That's okay as well. It's better if, if everyone thinks that. If everyone thinks that it was just you. No, it's not. It is really no idea. I do have no an idea. No idea. You're going through your own things right now. If somebody else was there with you, we need to know that. Why would somebody do that? Just because you're there with Travis. He didn't say. Hmm? He didn't say. He didn't say? They. They. What was the first thing they did to him? You were there. You saw it. What was the first thing I actually you saw? didn't see it. I heard it first. Was there an argument? No? Um, not between Travis and I. Any argument between anybody? Yeah. Is there any way I can see those pictures? I just... No, not right now. 
Can I see him soon? I will. You know. You need to start letting me know what happened. Okay. You're telling me that some other people were there. You know how that how much that concerns me. So I'm pretty much convinced by now that she wants to see these pictures so that she can construct a narrative around them. Yeah, that's my guess. I mean, at first, well, she's been going on about seeing these pictures now for a while. She's repeatedly asked to see them. Now, why would she be so desperate to see it? I mean, if someone did this yeah. and she was there, that would be... It would leave her horrific scars. I know. It's not something you would forget. Especially someone who you said you loved and was your friend. Exactly. Um, you wouldn't want to see pictures of them dead. Certainly not murdered no. in such a, a, a violent fashion. But um, I think she before she goes down, she goes into Jack and Ori mode. She, you know, she wants to see if these pictures will support the narrative or the version of events that she has constructed in her head. I don't know who they were, but they know where I live. Mm -hmm. Or they know where my parents are, I don't know if they know where my grandparents are, but they got my address, and they know where my family is. Mm -hmm. Sorry. So you're trying to say you're doing this to protect your family? Why would someone do this to you and to him? I don't think they really intended to do anything to me. You're saying somebody followed you all the way to Arizona from here? No, I don't think that. I think I was an element of surprise for them. You were an element of surprise? So they didn't expect I'm you guessing. to be there? I'm guessing. I don't think so. They didn't expect you to be there? I mean, they had to see my car. Okay, right, so she has just said that they knew where her parents lived. Yeah. Right, but she was an element of surprise when they got there. Right, so how are they going to know where her parents live if she was an element of surprise? What crater of the moon does she expect Detective Flores to have been born and raised on? You know what I mean? She has to try and construct it as she's talking so good because she's making it up off the court th that for a start doesn't make sense if she was an element of surprise for these so-called intruders how would they know all about her and how would they know that she was going to be there at that time if her car wasn't there yeah, it just because... doesn't add up yeah i don't think she said the car was there so how would these people Whoever they supposed to be, no. Do you know, I really do think that she needs to take a shit. Because it's coming out of her mouth instead of her arsehole. Is it someone who lives in Mesa local? I didn't recognise any of them. Well, you have to give me a motive. Why would they do this? Were they going after Travis? For what reason? You tell me this, but you give me no reason. They didn't discuss much. They just argued. About what? About whether or not to kill me. For what reason? Because I'm a witness. A witness of what? Him. Of Travis. Of Travis's murder. Yeah, but I didn't really witness it. Didn't see much. It was... Okay. I just um. Oh. You need to make this believable because it is not believable to me right now. You need to give me something. Now, I'll tell you something. If you told me that you'd come back after being at Tesco and you were chatted up by a giant Oreo biscuit and you went home and had sex with him, I'd believe that over the bullshit that Jodie Aries is spouting now. Well, I don't think the sex of his believing her. No. And I don't think you're having sex with an Oreo biscuit either. I'm not. Okay. I just listen. I am listening, Jody. Yeah, I, I am I listening, I'm and listening. it doesn't make any sense to me. It's fine because my family will. Uh... Well, help us protect your family. Protection from what? The Germans. If that's the case, 
it got the written, my driver's license. It has a PO box on it. Mm -hmm. And they got my registration out of my purse, which was in the purse that I was using at the time. And it has my parents' address on it. Why would they do this? You see where I'm coming from? Why, what kind of beef did they have with him? Or was it with you, or... You need to make this believable. Have you noticed how Flores keeps saying you need to make this story believable? He's not buying it. Of course he's not. He knows the story is just completely untrue. He's, you know... I think he will listen to it because it's his job. He's got to listen to it. But he knows that to separate the wheat from the chaff. He knows to separate the nut shit from the pepper, doesn't he? Well, of course he does. I mean, he already knows that there was only her DNA there. Yeah. So, obviously, he knows there was no one else There's there. There's no evidence to suggest that anyone else was there but her. Her and a little beady raisin eyes. People just don't go in somewhere and kill somebody for no reason and then let a witness go. That doesn't happen. They've already mm -hmm. killed one person, why not just take care of the other? Well, yeah. You know who they are if, if you're telling me the truth. I don't know them. Then I don't believe you either. And I can't. You can't expect me to. I, I want to. Um, I wasn't planning on going to Travis's house. I was going to go to Santa Cruz. Well, I wasn't even planning to go to Santa Cruz. I was going to go to Monterey, but by the time I called Matt, he's like, we're in Santa Cruz, meet us here. And I said, okay. So I went to the red room there, just we'll kind of hang out for mm -hmm. the locals. So many younger kids our age, sort of 20-somethings and 30-somethings. And I stayed the night in Monterey that night got up the next morning and visited with Daryl and his son before he went to school. Um, drove, drove, this was Tuesday, the 5th, 3rd, um, and I'm driving to LA, hadn't heard back from Laura yet, but that's what, it was, it wasn't until I got to LA where I thought, I was looking at my map, and Utah wasn't really on there, but I mean, Arizona, but because it was to Utah, the map quest directions I printed. Um, okay, I just, I just see, like, I've seen the Sopranos, and they're not mafia or anything, but. We've also seen the Sopranos, haven't we? We have. And the character that I certainly would liken to Jodi Arias is Phil Leotardo. He's sadistic. He's cruel and he's an absolute bloody fruit loop. Absolutely, I agree. And he's got shit hair like her as well. You know, I just, I honestly, there's part of me inside that thinks they're never going to come after my family. Well, from what you're telling me and from what I know about Travis and all his dealings, there's no reason anybody would go after him. Nothing. So what you're telling me about two people coming in, or however many people coming in and taking care of him and letting you go, it's just, just so far-fetched. I can't believe it. Why would they do this to him? What were they arguing about? What did they say? Their details. So that's three massive holes that you could drop an aircraft carrier through, right? Each one. Firstly, if they were, if they came for Travis, what motive? What? Why? Why would they want him dead? Why would they want to kill him? Yeah. Right? When everybody said he was genuinely well liked, very popular guy, right? Loved. Pretty much loved by his family and friends, right? And people who didn't really know him liked him. So what motive would they have these intruders have to kill him? Right? Second motive. Jody said that they knew where her parents lived. Right? Yeah. So if she was an element of surprise, how would they have that information? And why would they have that information if they were just after Travis? Well, they wouldn't have that information. They, would, they wouldn't, no. And the third point, if these two, you know, magically invisible imaginary intruders did happen to exist. Yeah. This is a question that Flores has brought up. Why did they kill Travis in such a savage way 
and leave her unharmed? Why did they let her walk away? She could potentially identify them. Exactly. I mean, if you want to get away with something, you do not You do not leave any witnesses. Yeah, she has not thought this through. She's thinking like a complete amateur, and you can see now why I call her Princess Pissy Knickers. Yeah. They didn't say a lot. They were white Americans, from what I could tell. They had, um, um, what do you call those things? They're like beanies, but they cover your whole face. And you've got like holes for your nose and in your, or, your your mouth, in your eyes. And they were, one was black. I think they were both black or maybe dark blue or something. Anyway, um, it wasn't until I was in LA and Laura wasn't getting back to me and it was already like nine something. But I was like, maybe I will just go see Travis briefly. And I called Ryan and said, my phone was about to die. And, um, I tried getting hold of Matt. I got his voicemail. I was going to ask him if my charger was there and if he could save it or mail it or something. Um, so I just... I had a, a wall charger, I think, and I was just going to charge it later, I guess, when I got somewhere. Anyway, um, I did call Travis and, and I said, guess what? And he said, what? I said, I'm coming to Arizona tonight. And there was silence and he goes, really? And I said, yeah. Well, what made you change your mind? And I just said, um, I just, cause I think I just told him I missed him or something. But I, I would have said, cause you're too compelling, but like he's too, he's already got a big enough head on that stuff. So I showed up and he was watching YouTube on his computer, on his laptop in the office. We apologise for the background noise everybody, it's on the original video. All we can say is it's one hell of a time for the police department boiler to kick in. He, we watched that for a little while and he was very happy to see me. Napoleon barked, but he always barks when somebody walks in and then he, Napoleon was really happy to see me. He gets so excited, his whole body jiggles. And I just do this thing to his butt where he just kind of push him on the side and he goes around in circles over and over and over until he realizes, hey, stop with me in circles. <laughs> so it was a good reunion. Um, and and uh, we went, I mean, I told him I was tired, I think, because I, I don't know what he was, what his intentions were, or what he thought my intentions were at the time, like we were going to do anything, but I was very exhausted from the trip and I just said, Look, I think I'm just going to sleep for a little while. And he said, that's fine. So I had slept pretty well the day before, but I was tired from driving all night. So I slept, and he slept, and we must have slept till about one. Uh, In the afternoon? Yeah. Must have been around then. Uh -huh. His roommate was home when I got there. I did never see his roommate, though. So I think I was asleep by the time he got up and left. <clears throat> Okay, first of all, we're not sure whether the phone conversation took place when she phoned him and said she was coming to Arizona. Yeah. We're not sure whether that took place. Um, hopefully it will come out in the trial, but any of you in the, the in watching know, just let us know in the comments, please. Um, but I find it quite difficult to believe that she he was happy to see her. I don't think he would have been. She's probably just making all that up. Yeah, she's probably just trying to make, you know, trying to distance herself as much from the murder as possible. Hence the invention of these two intruders. Exactly. Um, for, all, for all we know, he said to her, you know, go away, I don't want to see you. And she talked herself in there, knowing that she was going to murder him. Yeah, she's like, she manipulated him, basically, to get yeah. in there. I mean, I'm guessing that that day she played sweet she played sweet as possible waited until he was in a vulnerable position i.e in the shower yeah and then carried out her plan what an absolute animal okay if, if you don't believe me that's okay i'm trying to i'm, trying I'm just saying really that hard. you know it sounds to me like um like i'm already in the system pretty far in i'm not getting out anytime soon and as long as the rap falls on me, I think that... It's not good. I, don't do this. No, I'm just saying, 
I think that um, as long as that is, there's there's less of a chance that my little brother is going to be hurt, or my mom, or my dad, or my sister that live there. Okay, we'll continue with the story. Anyway. About one o'clock. Yeah, we um, had sex mm -hmm. a couple of times. Once was in his bed, and once was again downstairs in his office. And, uh... She had sex with him, knowing she was going to kill him. Of course she did. Sex with him twice, knowing she was going to kill him. Of course, it was a, her way of the last time. Yeah, she is the true definition of a femme fatale. He... I don't know what he, he was looking at. Some pictures that I had brought for him. Um, but he has a virus on his computer, so... When you click the start menu on Windows XP or newer with 2000 or whatever, you have like my music, my pictures, my computer. Yeah. You can usually click on my computer and then go to the D disk drive and open that. He like you'd click the Windows and it would come up, but none of those my this music computers picture yeah. or whatever, none of that would come up. So he had some kind of virus that he was dealing with, and then his screensaver was a bunch of little bugs eating up his screen. It was just weird. And he said that was from the virus too. I thought, I was like, that's a cute screensaver. He's like, yeah, it's my stupid virus. So, um, for some reason that was frustrating for both of us because we couldn't look at the pictures. And they were from our, a lot of our church history trips, which are on my other external drive, which uh, well, I haven't been able to access for a long since after Christmas because it just quit. Uh, and I just haven't had the money to spend to get all that and stuff back. Um, so you guys worked with that for a while? Or? Yeah, we had three discs, I think. Okay. Um, yeah, three. And... So what time is this now? You guys are messing with the computer? And... Um, I don't really remember. It was after every after we had done A couple it. hours or an yeah. hour or so later? Yeah, maybe. Okay. Afternoon. I, I just, you know, he had been cleaning his house. Um, So I couldn't, I wasn't sitting on the couch. Usually I'd just chill on the couch downstairs, you know, if, if no one was home. Um, but he had like chairs and all that stuff all over the couch. Like he was cleaning the floors or something. Uh, Fed Napoleon. I don't know if he made phone calls or not or what he was doing on the internet, but at one point he was gonna go up and take a shower. And it took a lot of convincing prior when he was shaving. Mm -hmm. I was like, I got some ideas and they didn't turn out good at all, not like I wanted to. Um, but I thought that I could get some cool pictures of him shaving. It's because he does the whole old-fashioned thing with like this little, I don't know how it works. Um, he liked it though apparently because he used it for his profile picture on MySpace. Um, so those didn't turn out as good. I was going to do that again later, but I said, I asked him if I could do pictures of him in the shower and he's like, no. <laughs> And I was like, I just have an idea. I have a couple ideas. And he's like, well, what do you mean? And I was like, I said, I have this. I, I saw this thing in a Calvin Klein ad once that looked really good. And so he was, <laughs> you're right. He wasn't very comfortable at first. He goes, he's standing there and he's all, I feel gay. <laughs> he has that look on his face, though. <laughs> so some I deleted and some I kept taking. Um, and some he looked really good, I thought. The one that you showed me yesterday of him looking right at you, I Water. think that's a great picture. That's he hates picture. it. I don't know what he hates about that. I think it's a very good picture of him. So you were taking pictures and showing them? Yeah. Yeah. He's only seeing you know, chill. His shower door was open, and his, his water pressure in that shower isn't that great, so it's not like water was going everywhere. Um, Okay, this is another instance in which her story does not make sense. And that is because she is talking about um, the photos that she's taking of him in the shower, right? Yeah. She hasn't said anything yet about the intruders being present while she's taking those photos. Because the time between her taking the last photo, which is the one where Travis is staring... Yeah. And the time when you see her foot with Travis's bloodied body in the background. Yeah. 
there's no way that that could have taken place. That whole scenario that she brings up could have taken place. It's impossible. It's too quick. How how would they, you know, have given her the information that they knew her parents? Exactly. Maybe they could have done this, you know, theoretically after they stabbed Travis to death. But if you stab someone to death and murder them, you're not going to wait around, talk to the witness, no, and then you're not. let them go and bugger off in the opposite direction, are you? You know, this whole story does not make sense. It is so full of holes, it's Swiss cheese. It doesn't make sense because because it's fu it's just full of crap. Yeah. He was kneeling down in the shower. I don't remember him. If he, like, if this is his shower and the sink is over here, I was like right here taking pictures. And I don't really know what happened after that exactly, except I think he was shot. Where were you? Um, if this is his shower and he's sitting here, I was like, well, if this is his shower and he's sitting here, I was like right here on my knees and his bathtub was right here and I was taking him here and I was just going through the pictures and I heard this loud ring. And I don't really remember except Travis was screaming. I think I got knocked out, but I don't think it was that long. Um, I know I got knocked in the head, and I've, I've gotten knocked in the head once by my dad when he was just really mad, and it wasn't like, actually it wasn't, he didn't knock me in the head, he just pushed me against the wall, and I hit my head, and I fell. But he, in this case, I think it was similar, because he uh, was screaming, and I was by the bathtub, and he was holding his head, and there were two people there, and what'd you say? Um, I remember putting my hand on his back because he was on his all four of his knees. He was like on his knees like this, doing something like this or something like I don't know, and I was like. I was like, are you okay? What's going on? What's going on? He's like, go get help. Go get help. And I said, okay. And I turned around. There were two people there. One was a guy and one was a girl. I, I could, couldn't tell that at first, but I could just see one was a girl. And I assumed the other was a guy because their build and then their voices. Um. Okay. Answer a question for me, please. In what universe would any police detective think that this story is any way plausible, based on the evidence? I wouldn't, because it's just getting more and more unbelievable as it goes on. Yeah, yeah. I am absolutely sure that Jody thinks that the whole of the Mesa Police Department, and indeed the Siskiyou Police Department, consumes magic mushrooms, because what she is saying is absolutely ridiculous. I remember if they were wearing like maybe jeans. Um, what did they say? One was in all black, one was in jeans. Did um, they say anything? Yeah, the girl wanted to kill me too. Um, what did she say? She didn't what, like, what words did you hear? What phrases? Um, who is that? Who is that? I thought he was by himself or alone or something and and he was like shut up, just finish it and and Travis was screaming the whole time. He wasn't screaming like a girl, he was just like like he was in pain, like he was like shocked, like oh, you know. Now, that's the first bit of truth, I think, that's come out of her mouth. Yeah, um, I believe her, actually, when she's saying that. But I believe that he was screaming in pain because of the injuries and the savage attack that she was inflicting on him. Exactly. 
He wasn't really moving though, he was just standing, staying kind of still on the floor. Then what happened? Well, as soon as he said, go get help, and I turned around, and then I, they were there, and... Where were they? They were in the bathroom. Where in the bathroom? Not in the, the hallway or was, in the bathroom? The girl was in the hallway, kind of. Um, and the guy was more toward in the bedroom, but like still in the bathroom, like on, on the tile carpet area, right there where it starts. Okay. And he started coming in toward the bathroom too, and I. What'd you do? It was. What happened, Jody? What did you see? <laughs> I took it out like a little bitch. <laughs> you took off? <laughs> I ran. And he stopped me when he... <laughs> he stopped you? And Travis... He was a... Um, he was still, like, conscious and still alive, and, um, But you just left them there? No, I, I ran into the closet, because, like, there's two doors, and they were sort of in the hallway already. And he stopped me, and he didn't touch me. He was just held the gun to my head, and he was like, you don't go anywhere. And he told, he told the other girl to finish it. I didn't see, um, but he was like, I don't think he was saying a lot, um, but <laughs> what happened? He told me to stay there and not to move. And where was that in the closet? No, it was um, I was like this. Sorry. Oh, piss off with your diagrams, you drooling cupcake. There it is. It's his bedroom. Okay, and then you got the long hallway down to his bathroom. The sink. And you have the closet here. Mm -hmm. And then you have his shower. Mm -hmm. And then the bathtub. Right there. And then there's the... Uh, Right the toilet right there. Okay, this is the, uh, the sink. Then his bedroom is, well, actually there's a closet door there. Mm -hmm. His bedroom. Yes, exactly. And so his closet is kind of like this mm -hmm. So I ran this way because they were, he was walking this way and she was already right here. Um, and then he stopped me here. And he said, don't move. And uh, Travis was here, or somewhere whereabouts. And he left the room for a minute. And I didn't have my stupid phone, because it wasn't charged. And Travis's phone was downstairs, and I didn't know his roommates, I didn't think, were home at the time. So. Like, I was just trying to think if there's any way I could call 911 or call or, or get out of the house. There's no way out except down the stairs. His windows are, they're two stories for one and they're just, they were hard to get to. He had stuff here and stuff here and blinds and screens and window coverings and, I mean, from the outside. And okay. I just, um, she was over him and I just rushed her and I pushed her. Have you ever heard such a complete load of piffle in all your life? No, but then again, this is Jodie Aries we're talking about. She's been lying since the bleed of beginning. And there is... There's what? Travis was bleeding everywhere. Um... What was she doing to him? Because he'd been shot at this time, right? 
He was still conscious even. Like still talking. Oh, he wasn't talking or saying much, but I could tell. He was breathing. He seemed like he was breathing calmly, I think. He wasn't like he was just there. Mm -hmm. I really remember it's such a blur. Okay. And so you you did what now? You pushed her? Mm -hmm. She she's a bigger a little bit bigger than me, not really in size but height. Um Oh, it didn't really deter her. Um, Did she have any weapons on her at all? Oh, uh, yeah. What'd she have? Um, she, I thought she was the one with the, the gun, gun, but maybe she had the gun, but he had a gun. So there were two guns, or, they, or one gun, I don't know. But she's the one who shot him, though, right? She was the one here, and he was back here at that time, when you saw them. I would think so, because, I mean, I do, I, I don't know, I got hit here somewhere, it, I just, I don't know, because when I was, when I woke up, he was screaming, and I saw her at this point, like right here, and walking by her back, she must have been walking back this way, and I saw him sort of following, and that's when he's like, finish and then I started running this way and he stopped me and then he left the room for a couple of minutes. Why did he leave? Maybe just, I don't know. I don't know. Okay. So what, like, happened don't what happened after you pushed her? Um, I, I got Travis and he wasn't like standing up really. He wasn't really doing much and I was, and he was, I was trying to get him and she came back. I got him kind of far, like right here. She came back, and uh, he was just, he was starting to just get weaker and weaker. And this guy came back in, and she said that, um, she said that they, they needed to um, do me too, because, um, because it was there, and he's like, no, that's not why we're here. That's incredibly convenient, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, although bearing in mind they would never say something like that. If no. two people killed someone, they wanted to get away, they'd do the witness too. Exactly. It's so convenient that they chose to leave her alive. I just find it incredibly convenient that they let her go and she didn't call 911 directly after and give a full description of what happened and what she saw of the intruders. Exactly. And I'm guessing that Flores is going to ask her why she didn't call 911 and she's going to have to come up with an excuse for that as well. Yeah. He had my purse which I had on the dresser here prior, somewhere. Um, and what did they do after this? After you guys reached this? Just try to stick with the incident, so I don't know what was going on. She came after me, and he stopped her. Okay. And she didn't get me. How was she going to get you? Did she have a weapon? She had a knife. Okay. You said she had a gun before. I don't know if she had a gun. I, I think, because I am guessing, um, I know that he had a gun. I don't know if she had a gun or not. So she was basically the aggressor. Yeah, unless he took a shot too. I don't know. But it seems like from what you're telling me, she was the aggressive one and he was the more passive. Yeah, I mean, there was definitely a aggression as far as, I mean, I don't know what you define aggression by, but like I was, there was a definitely a sternness and I wasn't like just free to walk out of there. Like, hey, it's cool, it's cool, you know, and it wasn't anything like that. A sternness. 
Did she just say a sternness? Yeah, she said um, that the woman displayed or had an air of sternness about her. Now, that is an unusual choice of words to describe two people, or at least one of the two people, who have just, you know, fatally injured the person that you profess to love. So, you know, I just think that's very, very sus that well, she said sternness. Why did she describe them as, you know, frenzied or, or sadistic? Monsters. Or monsters. Evil. Yeah, something like that. And, you know, it also begs the question, if they did take, you know, her purse and they know things about her, then she can tell the police because then, you know with descriptions and with stuff like that, they may, may be able to track him down. Yeah. You never know. But you don't keep stuff like that in a major murder investigation, you know, from the police to yourself. You do not keep that stuff to yourself. You have to tell them everything. But because she was the perpetrator, she is. this is just a cockamamie story, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. They had an argument back and forth, and she wanted to kill him, and he didn't. Um. Why, why didn't they kill you? Just because he said... They, he said, that's not what we're here for. Did they say why they were there? No. But it was obvious they were there for him. I didn't, they didn't say why. So it seemed like they knew him, obviously. Yeah, but he didn't seem to know them. I mean, he was a little out of it, plus they had masks on anyway. But he didn't express any kind of recognition. I could talk. He was able to say, go get help. Mm -hmm. And at one point he said, go to my neighbor's house. Go to my neighbor's house. This is a bit of Now, from doing the Chris Watts videos, we know um, that there is a contingent of people, no matter how big, no matter how small, who always think that the murderer is innocent. Yeah. Um, we know of a few channels that, you know, push this theory. Uh, we're not going to make any judgment on them because they create content that they believe is true. Yeah, we do so as well. We do as well, okay. But there are people who believe, and we've encountered them on Instagram, haven't we? Yeah. That Jody is innocent. Now, this woman gave three different explanations as to who and how Travis was killed. Yeah. Right? First one, it wasn't me. Second one, it was somebody else. Third one, it was me. Right? But self-defense. But self-defense, right? I, I'm not sure whether they think she's innocent on the strength of the second... Um, Interrogation. Uh, no, the second explanation, the, the two people who were there. Yeah. I'm not sure if that's what they're basing their assumption that Jodie is innocent on. If it's on that, um, then that's been thrown out because even she discounted that and said it was her. She admitted it, right? So how can you think someone is innocent when they've admitted it? It's the same thing with Chris Watts. He admitted doing it. Yeah, if you if you admit to something, if you didn't do it, why, why would, why would you? you admit to something that you didn't do? Especially a crime like murder. Yeah. Because you know that you're going away for life. Yeah. You're never going to see the outside again except you know through barricaded bars. by walls yeah when you get your hours exercise so um we for the life of us we cannot understand why these people believe these murderers to be innocent when they've confessed from their own mouths I, there was just like there was just no way did you see him. them hurt him anymore um other than a gunshot Um, she had a knife and I didn't, I don't know, it, he was bleeding everywhere. It was like, when she rushed me afterward, or she came back, I rushed her, but she kind of came back at me. Um, Why didn't she Travis and I were right about here, maybe? I don't know, halfway, I don't know. Um... And there was a little bit of a struggle with her and I. 
Um, I was so scared. I'm not a person who fights. Um, I'm not a person who knows really about self-defense. I took some classes once, but it was like eight years ago, and I've never been consistent with it. Okay. Um, so I wasn't sure. I just knew I had to hold on to her hands because she had a knife. What hand did she have it? She, she had it in this hand, but a little to her right, I guess. So. All right. What happened? So you didn't see her hurt him anymore. He was just bleeding. Where did he end up? He, um, I, when I tried getting him here, he said, go get help. And when I tried, I came back this way, pushed her, and he said, go, go to my neighbors, go to my neighbors. And I wasn't like, no, but I wasn't going to leave. If I couldn't leave without him, I was trying. Um, I felt stupid already for trying to run this way. I was going to go to a phone. And he was like, I just said, come on, come on. You know, he was naked, but I didn't care. Just come on. And he's like, I can't. I said, come on. He's like, I can't feel my legs. And they wouldn't let me be by him. Were you were you clothed at that time, or were you also nude? Yeah, I was clothed. Were those the pants that I showed you the other day on that camera? Uh, I don't think I have pants like that. I don't know. Um, I've got a lot of clothes. I'm trying to remember the clothes that I took to that trip. Um, oh, I do have another pair of striped pants, and they're they're gray though with a black stripe. I don't think they were that. I don't know. Okay. So what happened after that? Um. They had a conversation about killing you two and you, and then they decided not to. She Go really, really, point. really wanted to. Um, what happened then? From there, they were, I was here, like his armoire or whatever it's called with his TV was here, mm -hmm. and I was right about here, and I had to stay here. And I was calling his name, and they were like, shut the hell up. Um, and I was just, I don't know if I was crying. It was all just like, I, it was so weird. Um, he was going through um, my purse. Mm -hmm. And he pulled out my wallet, and he just took some cash. Um, I had, though, my cash stashed in the jeans I had worn, like a good chunk of it, not like 80 bucks, stashed in, in, in 420s in the back of my jeans pockets, which were in my backpack. Um, but I had some cash in here, not all of it, though. Okay. So he took that, and um, what happened? He, um, he was... What was she doing? Oh, the cogs in the head go round and round, round and round, round and round. She was like right here, that time. Doing what? Um, He's over here taking stuff from your wallet, uh, from your purse. You're here, she's down the hall. She, yeah, she wasn't far. It's not a far distance. I'm, there was part of me, I think, that was just, I was sitting, <clears throat> and I was just like, I didn't know what to say. Like, would you beg for your life? Do you, do you say, who are you guys? I'm powerless because I don't have any way to stop them. They, they were just more powerful. Well, continue so on. So I once you took stuff from there, what did you do? Um... She, she was, I don't know what she was doing, but she was arguing with him and talking with him and saying. What were they saying? She's like, it wasn't like super yelling. It was kind of like hushed, but mm -hmm. intense. Like, you need to da da da, shut up, it's not over here. Things like that. And, and uh, 
he grabbed my wallet and he was looking through it. He just took the cash, put it in his pocket. He um he got my registration out of my wallet mm -hmm. and he said What do you say? He said, you must be that bitch from California. Mm -hmm. And he was gone like this with my um, frustration. And he said, he said, you ever, ever, ever say anything about this? He said they'll do to my family the same way and me. And I didn't care so much about me at that point. He said, you need to leave, and don't you call anybody, and don't you say anything, and don't you act like anything happened. He's all, I'm giving you one chance. She's seen too many Hollywood movies. Yeah, um, unfortunately, she believes that the Durs Ex Machina uh, thing in movies is real, which is basically... Um, plot armor if you like she believes that this is giving her plot armor yeah. right uh she thinks that that's really the way criminals behave where they actually let a witness go <laughs> who potentially has to tell the tale if you are professionals or if you are ruthless criminals and you've just stabbed one of them to death you've got nothing to lose by getting rid of the other no you haven't so this is a very fanciful very very far-fetched very Hollywood movie type story that she's telling here and he's not buying it for a second. I don't think anyone would, would they? No, they wouldn't. I wouldn't. No, no. If you're in the room with her and looked into her eyes, you'd know she was talking utter crap. And she said she's gonna rat us off. She's gonna say something and he was like, shut up. He was like, you get one chance. Is that when you left? So leave now. And part of me didn't want to leave. Travis wasn't, was still alive. He was still, I could, he wasn't moving a lot, but he was still alive. I could see that he was still. Did you leave at that point? Um, I left the room. And, and where did you go? I went downstairs. But I didn't have all my clothes. What did you leave there? Well, Travis said I had some stuff there. I didn't see what it was. He said it was in his closet. So they were clothes of mine. But all I had was my purse and my backpack. I left those and and I went outside. Mm -hmm. And then what'd you do? I wanted to get help. I'm s I just wanted to get help. He what told me that if I didn't say anything, then I would be. That I would. That I wouldn't even live to regret it, but that I would regret it. No idea why they did this to him. You have to know something about it. I'm trying to think what else was said. Anything that clicked in your mind. Because why would anybody do this to him? He does nothing but help people. Everybody likes him. Doesn't owe people money. Don't people like that anyway. No. 
he doesn't get involved in things he's not supposed to get involved in. He doesn't do drugs. It doesn't seem like a robbery. No, it it's doesn't. Burglary. I was wondering if they took my stuff to make it look that way, and he told me to leave. And, you know, um, Travis usually keeps his cash in his wallet. So you didn't see what happened to him then? I just saw that. Did you get hurt at all? You said you were fighting with her. Yeah. What happened to you? Um, she cut me. Where at? My hand. Let me see. Where at? You Can actually you can't me? see it. If you look in a... My finger isn't the same, though. I was... Let me see. Which, where, is, where did it get cut? It was... It, conveniently, it was right on the crease. Right there on the crease. Can you see? Well, it's kind of a purple or color, I this guess. This one here. Right there. To this. Yeah, right on the crease. Well, there's a vein on this one, maybe. I don't know. Is this one here? Yeah. It's a little slice there. Yeah. Just a small one? Um. Or was it pretty deep? I don't know how deep it was, but my finger hurt for a while. For a while. Okay, so like right in that crease that you... Right. Across both of them? Uh, not my middle finger. It cut this one a little, but not as much. This is where it really went. I don't know how it happened that all these other fingers were missed, but this one, maybe that, I don't know. This one, like I still can't close this finger all the way. It's as close as it goes, whereas this one goes like that. Now, I'm guessing that these are all injuries and cuts that she sustained while she was attacking Travis. Of course they are. The defense yeah. wounds. And it seems to me that she, she's kind of showing them off as people do when they're proud of the scars. Oh, yeah. She's been in battle. You know, yeah. she's proven it. The, these are battle scars for her, aren't they? Yeah. yeah. Also, my CTR ring used to fit both fingers and I can't get it on this finger anymore. So it's cut pretty deep then? I guess if you feel it, squeeze it. It just feels like bone, like there's nothing abnormal there. Mm -hmm. But again, like my CTR ring slides right on this finger and I used to slide right in off this finger and I just can't fit a ring on here. Okay. It's a bigger size now. What about this hair? What's that from? That's my cat. Okay. I'm pretty sure. She scratches me a lot. So, when you were told to leave, you left? Did you get in your car and drive away? I always have my keys. Uh, my keys are on. I'll have a little clip on them. And I, I do that because I'm very, very spacey. Did you see any other cars in the driveway or on the street? Um. Any vehicle descriptions no. you can give us? Uh, no. Not that I... Not that I real, not that I, I don't think his roommate's around. And you just left. You didn't run to the neighbors, you didn't try calling. You knew they were in his house. You had time to run to a neighbor, why didn't you do that? I was really scared. Okay. I was really freaked out of my mind. Okay. I don't believe you. No, neither do we. No, we don't. Not for a second. And I think even if we hadn't been familiar with this case and the outcome and everything, and we watched this without knowing how it ended, I don't think we would have believed it at all. No, you can usually tell when people are lying. Her story was simply not plausible. And it just was impossible to fit. I mean, this all of this happened in the space of like, what? One or two minutes, hushed conversation, stabbing Travis to death 27 times. Uh, slitting his throat, shooting him in the head between like one and two minutes to do all of that, threaten her, um, shouldn't, you it know, in and out of different like rooms. That. Yeah, it's just stupid. I came in here hoping that you would tell me the truth. And this is not the truth, Jody. This is all I know. This just does not make any sense. It does not make any sense. That's all I know. Nothing changes for me. I didn't think it would. You didn't think it would? Well, what do you expect, you sweaty old minge mistress? You've done nothing but lie to him since the second you walked in. She's lied to both of the detectives. Both of them, and she's not going to stop telling lies for a long time. I feel responsible because I feel... 
but I could have done more. I feel that I should have gotten help. I feel that I should have been stronger. You feel responsible because you did this. I did not Jody, feel Travis. you did. You did. And there's nothing you can say that will change my mind at this point. This is an elaborate story which does not make any sense. Two, two people come in, first two white males, and then later you change it to... No, uh, I don't think I ever said white Yes, you did. When? At the beginning of the story. Oh, it was one And then you change it, oh no, one's a female. Oh, one was female the whole time. I said I wasn't sure at first, but you could tell by their build. Okay. It doesn't make any sense to me. And there's no reason anybody would go after him. There's nothing in his past, nothing in his, at that time that he was going through that would cause somebody to do that to him. Travis worked for Prepaid Legal, a multi-level marketing company. Yeah. He was also a Mormon. He was not a gangster. He was not a crime figure. He was not a stick-up artist. He was not a drug dealer or, or indeed a drug consumer, or as far as we running. know, or, or, you know, had a problem with guns, as you say. So who would want to kill him? Well, why would anyone want to kill him? What motive would anyone want to have to hurt him? The only motive, <coughs> or the only person with a motive is Jodi Arias. Yeah, the only person with a motive is her, but all of his friends know that he did nothing wrong. He's, there's nothing at all in his past. No, and his friends, I'm sure, were all questioned and said, we can't think of anyone who would want to hurt him apart from Jodie. She has dug her own grave. Or rather, she has fashioned her own cell. And the fact that they left you alive and let you go, that never happens. Why would anybody do that? Why would somebody risk the chance of getting caught? Just let you run out the front door when they're upstairs in this house, killing somebody, knowing that you could just run across the street and tell somebody, it doesn't make any sense. Does it make any sense to you? It doesn't, does it? No, they argued about it. It doesn't make sense. I thought for sure I was dead. I was hoping that you were gonna be completely truthful with me today. Obviously, that's not the case. I know you were there. I know you, you, you had some situation go on with him that got out of control. And the cut that you're showing me there, that's pretty, it's pretty obvious how that happened. I've seen that before. That happens when a knife slips through someone's hand because of blood. It's slippery and it cuts. That is. I've done this for a long time. And this is the most far fetched story I've ever heard. And it's not going to help you. Is that how you want to leave this? I just don't want my family to get hurt. Your family will not get hurt. They will not get hurt. The way you're hurting your family is by not coming forward and telling you the truth. There is a reason why you did this, and you just refused to tell me why. Maybe because you are cold and calculated, and you went there intentionally to do this, and you're ashamed of it. You're so ashamed that you will come up with a story to try to hide it. I was there that day, but I didn't do Travis's life. You haven't convinced me. I, mean, I, I hope you can convince the jury, but I doubt it very seriously. Because there's no evidence of anybody else being there. Nobody. And we're still not done looking at all the evidence. We still have other things to uh, 
to check in the lab and other mm-hmm. blood swabs and other things like that. And every time they call me and tell me, hey, we've checked this, points at Joey. Hey, we've checked that, that points at Joey. Nothing points at anybody else. Do you want to be truthful with me? If not, we can just end it now. You got more chance of sculpturing a masterpiece out of a toasted tea cake. And we'll just leave it the way it is. I know that it's obvious I was there. Um, no, it's obvious that you committed a crime, that you hurt there's Travis. There's no reason no, for me to hurt No, it's him. not like that. It's, it's, I know that you did this, and you refuse to tell me why. There's no you reason. You refuse to tell me why. There's no reason somebody else would come in and do this to him. There's no motive whatsoever. We haven't found any. What is my motive? Jealousy, anger, fear, if you're being alone, angry at him for not keeping you in his life. I don't know. That's why I'm trying to figure it out. There are so many motives with you. Too many. It's not too clear, but look at her face right there. Hamster staring at Moon. We know you had a twenty five auto. You guys reported it stolen. Covered the ammunition and it matches. We recovered a shell casing, it matches the ammunition. Prints your blood, your hair, the motive. There's you no were there. I wasn't jealous of anything. I was a little bit envious that he was going to Cancun, but that wasn't the reason. Like, I could go to Cancun. It's not cheap to go to Mexico. I mean, it's not expensive to go to Mexico. Um, you were probably standing above him when he was in the shower. And you shot him in the head. I was kneeling down beside him looking at the pictures. Me. And then you had a knife. And you stabbed him. Several times. Yes, you did. Jody. <sighs> Tell me the truth. Please. Or if you want, we can stop here. It doesn't matter. You've given me so much already. Why stop? Do you want to? Do you want to continue? Do you want to tell me the truth? What did you do with the gun? I never had it in my possession. Joni, you did. Never. Yeah, and I don't have it. Yeah, you don't have it. You know, people say that when they know of the gun. They've seen the gun. They've touched the gun. You don't have it. I saw the gun. Yeah. But you had it before. You've touched it. You've used it. I know you have. So we've already established that neither um, Detective Flores or us believe her story. We have. Right. But she's still sticking with it and she's hanging everything on this story. She's still in denial. Okay. Now, as we said before, she's held up over what would be now, what, eight hours, of, eight and a half hours of questioning? Yeah, I'd say that. Something like that. So Nearly three days. She's given him quite a bit. And I know we criticise Flores in this for, you know, being rather pally with her. But that did make a difference because she opened up to him a bit. She, she lied to him, 
but at least she gave him a different story than the one that she was giving him before. Like she wasn't there. That she wasn't there, that it wasn't her, that she was broken down. But the problem with that, now she came up with this story, it makes her even more un unbelievable. Yeah, it does. But... That lack of credibility plus the news interviews, but we haven't seen, but we kind of can guess what she says in them. Yeah. That plus, as we say, a lack of credibility um, won't help her going forward, will it? No. I don't think I've ever even fired a gun. I've, I've done bows and arrows, but not guns and water guns yet, but not a real gun. The gun that I got on Friday was never used. So you're going to continue to tell me that you didn't do this to him? Did not kill Travis. I believe you did. I truly believe you did. And there's nothing showing that anybody else did this. Nothing. I've been in so many scenes and so many investigations. And there's always, always some type of evidence left behind. No matter how careful somebody is. And in this case, there was evidence. Not pointing at anybody else. Just you. And that's what I have to go by. And that's what my report's going to say. Okay. I just, if, if I had planned to hurt him in any way, I, you know, I'm not the rightest person, but I. I don't think I could stab him. I think I would have to shoot him continuously until he was mm -hmm. dead. If that were my intention, and again, mm -hmm. I'd bring up the gloves again, but I would have to wear gloves, because, I mean, I'm not too worried about Prince A.S. they're all over anyway, but mm -hmm. I would never stab him. If, 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 if I had it in me anywhere to kill him, the least I could have done was make it humane as possible, or quick, or something, you know? I found that killing is humane, so to speak. I don't mean it that way, I just mean... I know, I know what you mean. Like, he was still alive. Yes, he was. He was alive for a while. And I knew that he'd been shot first, and he was still alive, and possibly tried to get away, maybe even tried to fight back. I think he was in shock. Mm -hmm. I just remember waking up and... But you didn't see him fight back or anything, did you? He just kind of collapsed there and... No, he was here. I outside of the shower. Yeah. And then he, you pulled him this way, you tried to get away with him, but then he couldn't go any further. He said he couldn't move. Yeah. He said he couldn't feel his And that's life. the last place you saw him. You said that he stopped and kind of collapsed right there. No. She was standing there and he was over here and... It just doesn't make any sense. He was still, like, able to move. His, like, he was, he was all, I guess he was all conscious up here, sort of, still. But he wasn't, like, on his leg or on his knees or on his feet. He wasn't walking. He was crawling. Yeah, I'm trying to think if I want to go in from there. He was sort of using his legs, but he wasn't standing up. If you're going to continue on that route, I don't think I'm going to go any further. I don't remember what time I left, but... I, I gave you an opportunity. This was your only opportunity. Okay, and, and you just, you just... Yeah, you gave me the information that you were there, but I knew you were there. And then you throw some story in that is not plausible. It just doesn't make any sense with the evidence that was there at the house. It doesn't make any evidence at all, or any sense at all. That evidence tells a story. And nowhere in that evidence does that story that you told me match. It doesn't match. Is that how you want to leave it? You want to stop here, and that's how you want to leave it. I know that I didn't take Travis's life. And I know well, that I you I know don't. you did. Look, I know you don't believe me. I don't believe you. 
as long as I am here, someone else is happy and it's not them. So you're just going to let these two people get away with it? There's not even any way to identify them. One was male, one was female, they were taller than me, not by a whole lot. Are you ready to go back? Um, yeah, I guess I'd still like to say something to his family, but I don't think I have anything that could bring them comfort. Okay. Maybe I could write them a letter. Oh, if you, you always have that opportunity to do that, so... Would they receive it? I don't know. I don't know. I don't mean would they accept it. I mean, if I had the... If it made it to them, would they get it? We're not entirely sure if she ever did write a letter to his family. I'm guessing she did, but I'm not sure whether they received it. I don't think they would have let her post it. No, I imagine not. Because as well. the last thing they want is it's to, to hear from the son's killer. Exactly. Or who they believe the son's killer is. Exactly. Yeah. And, you know, if if I was Travis's brother or you were Travis's sister, sister. one of Travis's I sisters. I wouldn't want to read it. You wouldn't want to touch you with a 10 meter barge pole, would you? Do you know? Yeah, I don't have their, I don't, I'm not going to provide you their address. I know his address. They know where you're, where you're going to be and if they want to make contact with you, they can do that. That's fine, I know his grandmother's address and I guess if I could mail it, but... It's okay. I don't well, know I if that's something... Well, let me see if I can get someone to take it back. You're absolutely sure you won't leave it like this? I don't know what else to say. That's it then. Okay, the next time I see you will probably be in Phoenix. Is that cool? I have a choice. Well, you go in there regardless, so it doesn't matter. But I was hoping that we could resolve this here. And it's obvious by what you're telling me, you don't want to resolve this here. I just can't. Well, at the beginning you told me that you couldn't tell me because you couldn't tell me who they were because you didn't want your family to get hurt. I can't. I can't okay. let my family... And now you're telling me you don't know who they are and therefore it doesn't matter. So there's nothing you can tell me. I can give you the so many inconsistencies that I don't even want to deal with right now. Okay, I just don't want okay. my family to get hurt. Okay, they won't be hurt. You're hurting them right now by not telling me the truth. That's what you're doing. Okay. So after this. Jody is left alone for about half an hour. She gets brought some food. She eats it. She fills out a questionnaire and then she's taken back to her cell. Yeah. Um, she then, um, after this, at some point, gives three media interviews, which we're going to cover in part five. Yeah, she gives about three, I think. Yeah. And then roughly four years later, she goes to trial. We will try and see what events transpired between 2008 and 2012. And if there is anything of import, we'll bring it to you in either part five or part six. Yeah, depending on what it is. But this is the, these three interrogations, really, they've been at times illuminating, frustrating, made... in, informative, really, into her psyche. Yeah, but it's also made me angry. Yeah. I mean, she's so annoying. She's very annoying. And they've got her. Even... By this early stage, the third police interrogation, you've had Flores, you've had Blaney, you've had Flores again. It's clear they've got her. It's clear they've got substantial, physical, and circumstantial evidence against her. And motive. And motive, right? This whole, um, it was two intruders, one was a man, one was a woman. That's all bollocks, right? Flores knows that. He knows that he's got her bang to rise. She should know that he's got her bang to rise. Any sane person would think okay i've got no way out here i'll cooperate and try and reduce a the sentence. sentence or make things easier on myself no she's sticking with it she wants travis's family to go through as much heartache 
as they can. Because now it'll go to trial. And yes. she knows that. Yeah. Again, as well, limelight on her. Yes. At the expense of Travis family, Travis's family's grief. Yeah, and pain and oh. frustration that they're going through. Yeah. It is heartbreaking that they have to go through that. But this... The, the, like, when I said that these have been illuminating, what I mean is... It just shows what a cold-blooded, narcissistic killer she is. Of course she is. And I don't think she would ever... Like Chris Watts, I don't believe she would ever repent murdering her victim. Oh, no. Because people like that don't. No. They don't repent. In fact, they're glorifying it. Yeah. So that's probably one of the reasons why she wanted to look at those pictures so badly. Well, like I say, it has... We've had mixed emotions going through these interviews but you know these interrogations but i'm glad we've done them yeah uh because you know it has given us an insight not so much into jody but into the case and the the investigation and how it was handled it's starting to really fascinate me now so i'm looking forward uh, to us doing part five and onwards yeah i am um thank you so much to everybody who's supported us uh through this series and the Chris Watts series and indeed every video we do. Yeah. You know, we really appreciate your support. Thank you for the feedback. Thank you for the likes. Thank you to all our new subscribers. Um, and also thank you to our YouTube fam. And our coffee supporters. Yeah, who were really, really kind. Very, very encouraging. Um, and we really, really appreciate the support. Uh, we may do a live stream after this. Yeah, uh, like we sometimes do. <laughs> yeah, a day or two after this comes out, we might put a live stream up. Uh, but we hope that you found this as informative as us. We will be releasing part five when we do it. Yeah. Uh, but in the meantime, thank you so much for watching, everybody. Please leave us a comment. Uh, please let us know what you think of this video. And uh, we'll see you on the next one. Take care, everyone. Thank you all. And bye. Bye.